beautiful Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to season three of the HR Cafe, Usapang Trabaho, Buhay Iba Pa. We're now at episode 121, and we welcome you to our weekly uh, virtual program. My name is Coach Darwin Rivers, and our topic for today is the five secrets to stop losing labor cases. And as um, we move on. Let's start our show. The HR Cafe Usapan Trabaho Boy Di Bapa is an online talk show program uh, aired live every Sunday at 3 p.m. This is our weekly weekend habit. And my name again is Coach Darwin Rivers. I'm the founder and president of the Philippines HR Group. I'm a certified life coach, public speaker, and motivational speaker. I'm also an HR consultant and currently VP for Human Resources for a BPO company. And of course, joining me for today are our mentors. We have mentors, Rona Del Florentino. Mentor Rona has more than 20 years of HR practitioner experience working in local and international companies. She's the president and CEO of Uprush Social Geekers, a public speaker and HR consultant, one of LinkedIn's top 100 um, professionals to follow, Mentor Rona Florentino. Hello, Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Coach Dar. Isa na naman pong napakagandang Sunday. Balitaktakan tayo dito sa HR Cafe. Coach Dar? Okay, of course, joining us is our constant mentor, Tina Koang. Mentor Tina is an operations and HR leader with broad local and overseas experience. She's a general manager for a retail company, an online content creator and blogger of Tina and Manila.com. Also, one of LinkedIn's top 100 women to follow in LinkedIn. Hello, Mentor Tina. Happy Chinese New Year, Coach Darwin, Mentor Rona, and to everyone who's watching the HR Cafe. Once again, welcome. We know you're very busy, but we're glad that you're listening and tuning in kasi napakaganda ng topic natin ngayon. Kasi makaka-relate halos lahat ng mga HR practitioners, lalo na pag matagal na kayo sa field na to. For those who are watching, please leave your name, your company name, where you are in the Philippines or overseas so that we can give you a shout out the show. Also, since this is a topic for labor relations or labor issues, please tag your uh, HR team members mm -hmm. or HR network or anyone of your network who would like to ask anything about labor relations and labor law, okay? So, we'll start our program uh, with our introduction. We welcome you to enter the HR Cafe. Uh, for those of you guys who just joined uh, us, uh, we've been running this show for almost three years. We started during the pandemic. We're the longest running HR virtual program. And here at the HR Cafe, we provide timely music updates. We impart knowledge and experience that are value adding and beneficial to our audience. We also discuss problems, issues, and challenges, and provide answers and resolutions through our guest resource speakers. If there are any new technologies, tools, and processes, as well as industry's best practice, dito nyo po unang malalaman about all of these. And if your company is hiring, the HR Cafe is a virtual job board. So please, we encourage you to post your any job-related uh, announcement at the comment section, and we'll, we'll be happy to share them through our network and our audience. The mission of the HR Cafe is to bridge understanding between employers and employees, and of course, to provide inspiration and motivation to the whole Filipino working class. Now, we start our program with our wow quote for the week. And for this week, our wow quote for the week comes from Anthony Gale. According to Anthony, a positive or winning mindset can often mean a difference between success or failure in any endeavor. A positive or winning mindset can often mean a difference between success or failure in any endeavor. How does this particular quote resonate to you? I know I know sabihin ng quote na to sa ating boy, especially right now, we're starting the year, January 2023. Let's start with our mentors. Mentor Rona, what, what's this uh, quote? How is this quote resonates to you? 
Yes, napaka-ganda ng ating quote for the day. Para sa akin, um, here's the thing about having um, y- yung failure mindset. Okay? Yung, yung bang tipong pag na konting masanggi ka lang is ayoko na. Yung, yung ganong mindset. Ang problema dyan is oftentimes when we are in that headspace, ang tendency natin is to magmukmuk. Alam mo, mag-i-soak in natin yung, yung negativity. And the thing about negativity is that the more you soak it in, lalo siyang lumalaki. Okay, lalo siyang, lalong lumalala. Kasi you, you tend to, you, alam mo yung pinagtatahi-tahi mo na lahat ng hindi magandang nangyari sa'yo, lahat na ng problema mo, pinagsasama-sama mo na. So it grows and it grows and it grows until such time na hindi ka na makapag-move forward and you, you think so lowly of yourself na. And, and that, that's that's the problem with having the negative, a, a very negative mindset. I was watching last night um, a, a Korean novella, si uh, pangalan, basta yung, yung Psychiatrist of Joseon. So, yun yung title niya. Hindi ko malalim ko ni pangalan niya first. It's, it's something that new in, in Netflix. Very short lang siya, 12 episodes, and very light lang yung kwento. But the thing is, he was a very good acupuncturist. But because he blamed himself, because he thought he killed yung king, alam mo yun, hindi na siya makapag-practice nung kanyang, nung kanyang craft. And during the first few episodes, yung isang character doon ang tawag na sa kanya is idiot physician. Kasi nga, hindi siya makapag, hindi siya maka, makapag-diagnose. Wala, wala siya talagang magawa. Tapos he feels so, so, ano mo yun, so low of himself na tipong wala na silang makain nung kanyang, yung, yung person attending to him. Wala na silang makain, binenta na lang niya lahat ng gamit kasi ayaw na niyang mag-treat ng patient. So imagine that ha. Imagine um, having the wrong appreciation of what happened um, and not moving forward. Wala na tuloy siyang nagawa. But iba, isipin mo na lang kung kunwari, yung mindset niya did not dwell on the feeling of um, yung, yung pagiging walang kwenta, yung feeling of uselessness. What if, for example, that person took a step back and tried to, you know, regain his balance, change his paradigm, and think about ano bang po pwede kong matutunan dito. Kasi pag sinabi naman natin positive or winning mindset, it doesn't mean na sobrang lahat na lang, ay, ang galing-galing, ay, masaya, ay, huwag tayo masyadong, ano, huwag natin mag Kasi meron din naman toxic positivity. Hindi yun ang ibig sabihin ng winning mindset. A winning mindset is one where you are able to take a step back, reassess the situation, and see, number one, what can I learn from this? Number two, what can I do so that I can move forward and address this situation? Hindi kailangan na, ah, okay lang yan. Hindi yati kailangan problemahin yan. That's toxic, pos- uh, toxic mindset and toxic positivity. So, ganun dapat na we are able to, to take a step back. Kasi when we are able to do that and um, separate ourselves from the situation, we are able to see ano yung po pwede natin gawin which in the long run can lead to success. It might not be a success now. It could be a success three months from now, two weeks from now, a year from now, but it will be a success. If that is your mindset and you do not let things affect you personally and you're able to see things from an objective perspective, the more na marami kang po pwedeng magawa and the more that you can move forward instead of yung talagang ninanamnam mo lahat ng uh, problema sa mundo. Yun yung, yun yung dating sa akin ng quote for the weekend. I hope that this is our, um, something that our HR professionals, our viewers right now, keep in mind, especially pag sobrang napipressure na sila with work. Ayan. Mentor Tina, what about you? What can you say about our wow quote for the week? Simple lang naman. Hindi pwedeng hindi. Yeah. So a lot of people kasi when they do things, nagbabaka sakali. Alam mo yun, like kunyari magpapaalam ka. Alam mo na baka pwedeng approve, pwedeng disapprove. And there's a lot of instances when we do things we are already putting our mindset na, ay, hindi mangyayari yon, Hindi ma-approve yung request ko for a raise, hindi ma-approve yung request ko for a leave, hindi ma-approve ko yung ganito sa akin, para hindi ka patapos, hindi mo pa nagagawa, bakit inuunahan mo na? Because sometimes, like, that type of anxiety that we bring with us shows. And people kasi, in, lalo na yung business, likes confidence. So long as you can justify it, then go with it, hindi ba? Kaya nga, pangyari, for example, bakit maraming mga babae ayaw yung mga, ano yung medyo shy, 
yung hindi sigurado, torpe. yung pwedeng torpe, torpe yun, yung pwedeng ganito, <laughs> pwedeng ganyan. Why is it that always it's the bad boys that get the girls? Because it's really like a positive winning mindset. Sige, go, go, go. Pag, pag kunyari na busted, okay lang, next, di ba? <laughs> I think we need to carry that mindset through our lives. And I also think that for me, because ah, I already have kids, the best thing we can give to our kids is a uh, education, is education. And the second is to train them to have a positive winning mindset. Kasi if a person has a positive winning mindset, regardless of the circumstance surrounding that person, the person can make the most out of it. Kunyari, magbubuk ka ng trip, tapos na-delay kasi raw namatay yung generator. So you're stuck in the airport, right? It sounds, re- and most people think, oh my gosh, I miss my flight, I miss my hotel. Or you can have a positive winning mindset. Oh well, let me blog about it, let me talk about it, let me just spend time with my friends. You know, there are many other ways to change your circumstance na something so bad and so unlucky can be a very good thing pa rin. I implore everyone, especially those who are watching the HR Cafe, always try to think, first, hindi pwedeng hindi. And number two is, if something bad happens to you, how do you turn it around to make it good? How do you make lemons into lemonades? How do you make something so heart-shattering sh- into something positive? Because it's not the situation happens to everyone. Problems happen to everyone. Lahat ng tao may problema. What differs from the winners and the losers are those who can transform their problems into opportunities. And we've seen a lot of that over the last two and a half years when so many of our kababayas made the most out of the lockdown, the COVID-19 pandemic, and actually had career changes and were able to follow their dreams because of that. So before I turn back to Coach Darwin, I would like to greet the early birds. Edgardo Jr. Bogayong, mag- mag- mapagpalang hapon, Kung Hei Fatsoy. Nemi Marquez Castell, good afternoon, everyone. Kung Hei Fatsoy. So, Coach Darwin? Okay. I would, I, when I actually first... Uh, read this well quote for the week. I remember a discussion that I had with uh, not, um, when I attended uh, a webinar in the U.S. Psycholo- Psychology Society. There is this story. Are you familiar with the SATs in, in, in the U.S.? The SATs kasi in, in the U.S. is really more of an assessment if um, uh, a student will be able to to be successful in college and successful in life. And normally, ang, ang median score for you to pass SAT is uh, 1,050. If you have a score of, of 1,350, you're at least at the top 10% of the U.S. Uh, college assessment test. Now, there's this particular story that happened now years, years back where... where um, one of the assessment tests, a high school um, uh, guy, and he's, ano, ah, the, 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 the background of this person is tamad siya mag-aral, magang, uh, marami siyang issues sa buhay. And then he took his SAT test. And the SAT test, lo and behold, um, he got 1450 And that's one of the highest SAT scores ever recorded during that time. So, ang unang reaction ng mga tao sa ka, ng, ng mom niya, sa ano professor niya, did you cheat? Kasi, ano, tawag dito, uh, imposible talaga sa isang, sa, sa taong yon with that particular background, with that particular mindset, with that particular social class, na, ano, na ma-achieve yung ganun kataas na evaluation sa SAT test. At ang sabi ng bata is, Alam niyo, gusto ko mag-cheat, pero walang way for me to cheat. So, sinagotan ko na lang based on the instinct that I have during the whole examination. So, this person, nung nalaman niya na, that he was one of the more than top 5 percentile of the graduating high school students going to college, he pursued to go to college. And what he did is a change of mindset na nung nag-college siya, iniwan na niya yung mga barkada niya, 
he was he went to be very studious at school um he joined different clubs and organizations and he was able to meet people na na ano na sa tingin niya makapag-add ng knowledge niya and this particular person went well in the whole time of in, in in his college life and graduated with latin honors when he graduated in an ivy league school kasi ano siya eh naging scholar siya sa isang ivy league school sa US and this person became a successful businessman and a successful public official in the states lo and behold after 15 years na naka graduate na siya there was a he received a letter coming from the SAT um, department na nagsasabi na during his time, there was an anomaly on the exams. And isa siya sa 150 people na namali ang evaluation test. And he he didn't get a uh, 1,450 for an, for an SAT. What he got was 750 to 780 score which is very low now what is the story trying to say <clears throat> hindi dahil sa naloko siya kaya siya naging successful ha what i'm trying to say is yung mindset ng tao kasi nung nung na-realize na ha pwede pala akong maging magaling pwede pala akong maging matalino kaya ko pala at nung na-realize na kaya niya he made Uh, strives to change his environment, change the people around him, and make sure that he work hard to be at a level that alam niya na dapat ganun yung ginagawa ng taong may pangarap kasi mataas yung SAT scores niya. So going back to this particular quote for the week, it's really our mindset that set us apart. Uh, in any bad or or good situation and at, at any problem or, or challenges that we've we encountered it's it's how we we think that matters if we have a positive winning mindset it all makes a difference kasi kahit gaano pa ka challenging ang isang bagay ang isang problem we'll be able to win it and we'll be able to uh, make sure that we reach our goal. So that's that's something that struck me kasi nung, nung na-realize ko na. It's really how you think. It's really how you formulate your mind that is important. Diba? So that's it for me for Wow Code for the Week. Baka meron na gusto mag-share from our, I know, from our audience. Meron ba? Wala may nagsashare ba? Or baka may mga bagong joiners at the HR Cafe for today. We have almost 50 people that are watching us live. Yes, JQ is here. Sabi niya, agree daw siya do sa ating mga discussion for today. Matilda has also mentioned, good afternoon everyone. Erlim Son, Kimi Perez, tag his friends, Nico Sevilla, Gian Shapko, Cara Camille, Riza Tapales, B- Bianca, Sendai, Diego Medrano. Ayan. And good afternoon daw, Coach Darwin Rivers and HR Cafe team from Eric of CMA Commercial Trading Corporation. Ayan po, Coach Dar. Okay, let's go to our HR questions for the week. Isa na naman pong question na paulit-ulit na pinapost sa Philippine HR Group. I've been working for a few months already with my current employer, but I found a better job, a better opportunity. Since ilang buwan pa lang naman ako sa company ko, po pwede ba akong mag-resign immediately kasi wala naman ako natanggap na contract? Is that something that a person should do? Wala siya natanggap na contract, so sa tingin niya, hindi siya employed. So, pwede siyang mag-immediate resignation. What's your take on this? May 13 na mauna ka kasi I'm sure in the retail industry this would normally happen. Or you've see, you've heard about cases that this happens. There is a very interesting case that came out in the Supreme Court this week. It's about those, uh, I think, Lazada drivers down. Oh, that yeah. <laughs> they were arguing kung employee pa sila ng Lazada or hindi. Mm-hmm. And the Supreme Court ruling referenced the fourfold test. Let me enumerate. The fourfold test indicates if you are an employee or not of the company. The first one is if you were selected and hired by that company. Number two, 
if you were paid wages by that company. Three, if you can be dismissed by that company. And four, if the company can control the tasks that you are doing in that company, di ba? If you fall on, wala doon is if you have a contract with a company. <laughs> di ba? Parang out of correct, the correct. In general and the Supreme uh, Court uh, is, there is the fourfold test. Hindi naman nila sinulat, number one, dapat may kontrata. Kung walang mm-hmm. kontrata, hindi kayo empleyado. Kung may kontrata, empleyado kayo. Very important, a contract does not make or not make you as an employee. It's a, It doesn't, di ba? So even without a contract, the company cannot deny you are an employee if they fo- if they follow the fourfold test. Kasi may mga staff, pag gusto mag-awol, kasabihin, ay, hindi ako empleyado guys, kasi walang kontrata. Wala pa ako nalilisip na kontrata. Oo, <laughs> Magre-reklamo, ay, kahit wala kaming kontrata, empleyado pa rin ako. Yeah, it's very double standard, right? Pick a side. Main point, the contract does not mean, having a contract or not, does not mean you are unemployed. We have to follow the fourfold test. Having said that, ikaw naman kasi, wala ka ng kontrata, gusto mo mag-resign, gagawin mo pang dahilan yung kontrata. But ah, Pwede na lang sabihin, pwede ba mag-awol? Di ba? At least medyo diretso tayo kung anong talagang balak mo. Gusto mong iwanan ng company mo sa ere, naghahanap ka na lang ng dahilan. And the only reason you want to leave the company is because you found a better offer. And my advice only is, wala namang problema mag-resign. Wala rin pro- any anything. You, do, you can always leave your employment. But the labor code indicates, with or without a contract, you still need to render at least 30 days notice, even if it's not indicated in the contract. Okay? You can request to shorten it. You can request to waive it kasi may bago ka ng trabaho. Pero if it's still disapproved, you still have to follow it para maayos yung clearance and ma-process yung final pay mo. If you choose not to do so, huwag tayong magreklamo kung number one, bad record po to. Number two, may samaan ng loob from the company to you. Three, baka may damages pa. And four, I mean, if you do this to everyone, I, I don't think, you know, you're not a professional. And I find that people who act professionally, regardless of status, regardless of background, always tend to have a better career or job path than those na pag may problema, ah, mag-aawol na lang. In the Philippines, it's hard to chase after people who go awol. Because, you know, there's like 110 million people in the Philippines. So, ang hirap hanapin. But let me remind you, what may be a big world will be very small, lalong-lalo na pagtanda mo. And once nag-awol ka, mahirap po talagang, I mean, sa akin, ha, it's a very big no-no. Pag nalaman ko na nag-awol yung tao, hindi ko na talaga hina-hire. <laughs> I'm sorry. Even if you say like, I'm, you know, that was five years ago. No, because you were unprofessional then. What would stop you from being unprofessional now? And I like my people to always remain respectful and professional. Kasi yun din yung ginagawa, yun din yung turing namin sa mga empleyado. Okay? Mentor Rona? Nalala ko nagkaroon ng time sa Philippines HR Group. There were, I think, about two people who were um, insisting na there, uh, as, as long as there's no contract, pwede ka na umalik. There were two people. I remember that very, very distinctly kasi those two um, were actually MBA students. Ay, talaga? Mm. Oo, oh, MBA students. Which was, um, Anong school nila? Huwag tayo mag-enroll. <laughs> Nakakaloka kasi this is part of contracts and obligations. This is one of the things that mm. they teach with contracts and obligations, that the contract doesn't have to be something that's written as long right. as there, there is meeting of the minds. Because a contract is a meeting of the minds. Kaya nga may instances na um, sinusun, or sinusunod ng, ng ating mga korte kung ano yung napagkasunduan 
even if it's a verbal contract lang. May, may mga ganun tayong situations. Now, going back to the question that, that we have, I, I, I agree 100% with what Mentor Tina has mentioned. Just because you don't have a contract doesn't mean that you're not an employee. What is being used by courts in determining employee-employer relation is the fourfold test. And among the four, so kasi inisip nung iba, ah, tatlo lang doon ang check sa akin, yung isa wala, I am not an employee. Merong isa doon, that is considered as the control test, which even if you un lang ang nandoon, it could be a sign that there is an employer-employee relationship. Yun yung control test. How the company controls the work that you do, when you do it, how you do it, where you do it. So hindi lang basta output. If the company has control over that, then most likely you are an employee. So sure. even without the contract, empleyado ka, posibleng empleyado ka. Now, hindi yung yung kawalan ng kontrata does not waive whatever is in the labor code. So even if wala kang kontrata, you are still bound by the 30 days na requirement, at least 30 days na requirement ng ating batas for a resigning employee. We also have to keep in mind that the 30 days is to protect the employer, not the employee. Kaya nga, nilagay yan ang batas para ma-insure din naman. Ito yung iilan lang, konti na nga lang, iilan-ilan lang yung batas dun sa ating labor code na nagpo-protecta sa mga employer. Kasi naiintindihan din ng ating batas na pag biglang nawala yung empleyado, ba kawawa yung employer. Paano kung meron mga mapending, magkaroon siya ng additional na mga charges, damages, dahil sa biglang pagkawala ng empleyado. So para protektahan din yung mga employer, meron niya ang uh, merong cross na meron niyang cross na yan doon sa ating labor code. So iingatan po natin hindi dahil sa ayaw mo na may mas magandang offer alis na. That's the legal side. Now, from my own experience and I think mentor Tina and coach Darwin will agree. Whenever you come across, you will always come across but before that, you will always come across a better offer. Always Kahit ano pang trabaho mo ngayon, kahit gano'n ka kasaya, you will always come across a better offer. There will always be a company who will offer higher salary, better benefits, better culture, palaging meron niyaan. Now, pag kayo ay inofera ng mas mataas na salary, okay, careful lang palagi. Bakit? Mataas na salary, mataas ang pressure. An employer will always want a return on their investment. If you want to have a salary of 100,000, 200,000, 300,000, be prepared to all to also be required to show a different level of number 1 professionalism, number 2 skills and competency. Hindi sila magbabayad para sa isang taga, let's say, ikaw yung nag-aayos ng benefits ng company nyo. Hindi sila magbabayad ng 100,000 for that because that can easily be outsourced. If you want a higher salary, you are going for 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 salary, then you would need to know how to do anal analysis, how to be strategic in your way of thinking. You also have to consider that. At the same time, higher salary would also mean dagdag na pressure. Hindi ilang ito yung tipo, ah, ito lang gagawin ko, ito lang nasa job description ko. Hindi, I am paying you 50,000 pesos, 60,000 pesos. Therefore, you need to be able to do this, 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 this. And you, you need to be able to handle all of this pressure na yung tipo, 6 o'clock ang tapos ng iyong office, pero minsan 7 o'clock tatawagan ka pa. Minsan ng aga-aga may tanong sa yung boss mo. You should be able to manage that. Not that I'm saying that you should answer and, you know, do all of this, but you should know how to handle that. Kung yung ganyang kalilit na bagay, nahihirapan ka na. What more pag gindo ka na sa mataas na salary? Tapos saka ka ngayon magre-reklamo, sasabihin mo bigla na, ah, sana doon na ko sa dati. Bakit doon sa dati ko employer, ganito yung ginagawa. So you have to be careful ha, hindi lahat ng makinang ay ginto. Be careful with that. Ayan. Coach Lar? May pinag-uhugutan po talaga si Coach Roda. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work from 7.30 to 2 a.m. And that was Correct. fine. I mean, it's very weird because here in the Philippines, everyone's so protective of their eight hours. But if you go to any other Asian country like China, Hong Kong, Singapore, in, there are many jobs talaga na hindi talaga eight hours. As in weekends. Yep. <laughs> we, sure. At saka hindi kami nag-account ng overtime pay. 
Pero dito Correct. sobra silang overtime, mahal na pay. Sa amin, we never talk about the, 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 that type of computation anymore. <laughs> Hindi na may binigrangan na, boss, but overtime ako, nag-business trip ako, magkano ba dapat ba? Di ba overtime yun? I mean, I, I think it might be a Filipino thing. <laughs> Coach Darwin. Well, well, ako naman, ano, um, since you guys already stipulated Yung about mm-hmm. the legal uh, yes, it's correct. Um, in the absence of the contract, it's still the meeting of the minds. It doesn't mean that you don't have a documented contract, wala kayong employment contract. Uh, a verbal agreement is still an agreement. It's still a contract between you and your employer. Diba? Tapos meron pa nang mag- magbibiruin yan. O sige, kung wala akong contract, paano ma- Papaano daw yung mga benefits sa kasweldo? Papaano, papaano, ano, papaano, uh, mapapatunayan na uh, hindi gano'n yung nila. Pero that's besides the point. The question is, are you employed or not? So given that there's a verbal agreement, you are employed. And given that you are employed, you need to follow what is mandated, which is, of course, rendering the notice period. Which is, I just have to remind this, especially to the newbies and for those people who are building their career. Always remember, when you guys are applying, this particular employer, this manager, or the company gave you an opportunity, gave you an opportunity to welcome you to their culture, to their organization, and for you to be able to to earn, right? And, and for you to be able to um, have money and um, support your family. You owe it to them. Be respectful that if you decide to leave, mm. be respectful enough to render proper notice period because that will be a gauge of your not only your maturity, not only your professionalism, but also who you are as a person. Always understand that um, if that they have entrusted you by hiring you. Give back to them by making sure that you render proper notice period so that there will be no burning of bridges. Always remember, especially in the Asian community, napakaliit lang po ng Asian community natin, um, malalaman malalaman natin kung meron bang uh, negative ang isang uh, negative record ang isang tao kung hindi siya nag-render, nag ba siya or what not. So always make sure that if you're leaving, leave with a good experience for both you and your employer. Um, ask, uh, make sure that you render the 30-day notice period. Or if not, ask at least if you can shorten it. Kung pabayad, di good. Kung hindi, well, by law, you have to render. Okay? Okay. Yes, okay. So, siyempre pa, da, nandito na po tayo sa portion ng kung paano natin pinapakita ang pagmamahal natin sa ating tatlong government agencies. We have, of course, SSS. SSS has already implemented a hike in their contribution. Hindi po ito pinatigil, diretso po ito. Pero, bago po tayo mataranta, ang increase po ay sa side ng employer at hindi po sa side ng employee. Okay, so employer lang po ang magkaroon, nagkakaroon, magkakaroon ng increase or nagkaroon ng increase this year. Sa next year pa po magkakaroon ng increase doon next year or next next year ang increase naman ng employee side. So this 2000, time... 2025. Yes, 2025. So this year, employer lang po ang nagkaroon ng increase. So mga employees, wag po kayong mataranta. Nung isang beses may nag nagpost tayo, ang dami man nagko-comment ng, naku, hindi naman tumataas ang sweldo. Huwag po kayong mag-alala kasi wala po ito. <laughs> ng empleyado, employer side lang po ang nagkaroon ng increase. So from um, 8.5%, 9.5% na po yung employer contribution or employer share doon po sa ating contribution. Ayan. At pinapaalala din po ng SSS, pinabilis na rin po nila ang pension loan kasi kahit weekend, holiday, pwede na po kayo mag-apply kahit alas 12 ng hating gabi dahil online na po ang pag apply ng pension loan. So punta lang po kayo doon sa inyo pong my.sss account para kayo po ay makapag-apply ng pension loan. But be careful ha, mga pensioners po natin dyan dahil yung pong pension loan, ang payment po niyaan ay each charge against doon po sa inyong pension. So huwag po kayong magulat pag nag-loan kayo at yung pension nyo lumiit kasi doon po kukunin yung kanilang mga ibabayad. Ayan. 
Okay. Next po. Ah, pag-ibig po, notice to the public. Pag-ibig warns everyone that there are some people who go door to door asking for money from the public using the names of public pag-ibig Fun officers, please be informed that pag-ibig fun officers or pag-ibig does not really go door to door to talk to the the members. And if you meet somebody who claims they're from pag-ibig and are not inside the pag-ibig office, please report them to the pag-ibig so that these people will be prosecuted. Next, prosecuted. Next. We also remind that maganda po ang magkaroon ng pag-ibig loyalty card plus because you have a lot of discounts which includes DHL enjoy 10% discounts and FPG insurance which you will enjoy 20% in ano discounts from your regular premiums. We would also like to greet these people Mary Chris Soriano Vinluan, good afternoon. Arcel Arkaya Kababaw. Ah, may clarification po siya doon sa MS MCS increase. But sa MCS nga, iba din po. Kaya sa ibang employee, affected na ng Chris. Tama po ba, uh, Mentor Rona? MCS or MS, I think MSC, ang monthly salary credit. Ah, so, yeah. monthly salary yeah. credit po, uh, if you're referring to the monthly salary credit, um, nagkaroon po na, wala pong epekto. Okay? Generally, wala pong okay. epekto sa side ng employee. Yun pong increase doon sa side ng employer. So, kung mapapansin nyo po, doon po sa side ng employee, nandun pa rin po siya doon po sa ating um, 4.5%. Hindi po siya Correct. naging, hindi siya tumaas. Okay? Yun pong 9.5% sa side po ng employer, 9.5% against the mon monthly salary credit. Kung mapapansin nyo po, yung monthly salary credit ay hindi rin po nagbago. Okay? So, yun po yung sinasabi natin dito. So, sa side po ni employee, wala po generally naging change doon sa kanila po um, contribution. Okay? Pero Ayun mentor, po. Rona, di ba parang nag Meron na ngayon parang 20,000, 25,000 yung MSC. Does that mean that the benefit that the benefits lalo na for sickness or maternity has already changed? Kasi last year hanggang maximum of 70,000 lang kasi the MSC maximum was only 20,000. Does that mean that tataas din po yung benefit na paglabas? Hindi po kasi ang atin pong highest monthly salary credit pa rin ay nasa 20,000. Wala pong pagbabago mm -hmm. sa monthly salary. Nagbago lang sa dagdag ng bayad, hindi yung sa dagdag ng labas ng benepisyo. Yes, wala. Wala <laughs> pang labas ng benepisyo. Ah! ah, okay. Daday, sa lahe din nyo, watching from Paranaque, welcome to the HR Cafe. Coach Darwin, back to you. But oh wait, okay. wait lang, tinignan ako sa glit. Kasi I think ang sinasabing niya, kasi nga dahil doon sa monthly salary credit, pag tinignan nyo kasi yung table, mm, mapapansin mm. nyo na yung lowest salary range dati is at around 3,000, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Nasa around 3,000 siya. Nasa 4,249 na po ngayon. Um, at kung mm. ikukumpara po natin siya, so talagang meron akong ano dito, meron akong, um, tawag nito, kodigo dito. Kung mapapansin po kasi natin, hmm. last 2022, ang atin pong lowest monthly salary credit is sa 3,000. Hmm. This 2023, hmm. ang lowest monthly salary credit natin is 4,000. I think ito yung nire-refer niya. Kasi hmm. kung, dahil monthly salary credit po ang pinagbabasihan ng atin pong mga contribution. Hmm. So yung 4.5 of 4,000 is of course different na siya dun sa previous table natin ng 4.5 ng 3,000. Doon po nagkaroon ng change. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, kung yun dati, yung pinakamababa natin na contribution from the side of the employee is at 135. Ang pinakamababa na natin ngayon sa side ng employee is 180. Pero mm -hmm. technically, 4.5% pa rin ang ginagamit na computation. I think yun yung sinasabi niya nung ating, hindi ko lang makuha ko ano yung pangalan nung ano, hindi kasi lumalabas dito sa side natin. Pero yun, I think yun yung sinasabi niya. So, ang sinasabi kong hindi nagkaroon ng increase, yung yung 4.5% still at 4.5%. Pero dahil binago nila yung lowest gross salary range natin at nasa up to 4,249.99, yung lowest salary range na natin, yun nga yung contribution, tumaas din siya. Okay, pero technically, 4.5% pa din siya. And tama ka, Mentor Tina, yung ating benefits, same pa din po. Mentor Tina, may nagkatalik ka, Francis Ang. Nagpunta daw siya sa branch ng uh, pag-ibig para mag-apply ng loyalty card. 
Pero sinabihan mm-hmm. daw siya na priority daw ang mga maglo-load. Is that true? Di ba wala namang ganyan advisory ang pag-ibig? No, wala po. Ano lang yan, ba- back tayo doon sa ano natin. Code for the week. Hindi pwedeng hindi. <laughs> Hindi <laughs> totoo. Lalo na for mga government agencies, di ba? Malalaman mo sino yung newbies sa mga experience na. Kasi sigurado, pag pumunta ka sa isang government office, either SSS, PhilHealth, Pag-ibig, the first answer talaga nila is, ay hindi pwede. Pag ganun, dapat buhilo ka uli. Sir, pwede po bang sakali lang? It's not a problem. To, ano, hindi, wala silang ganong klaseng rule. Walang priority for naglo-loan. Hindi pwede na dahil naglo-loan ka, merong, dapat ikaw unahin. Hindi yon Agree. Agree. Yeah. Pero clarify ko din yan ha. Baka naman kasi si Pag-ibig, ang sabi is, for this day, tapusin po muna natin yung mga nag-a-apply ng loan. Kasi may, um, nung ako nag-apply for the loyalty card, meron silang ganong ginagawa na kung sino yung mga nag-a-apply for loan nung, na nandun sa site, inuuna nila yon para ma-process kagad yung application ng loan. And then, pagtapos ng i-process, saka naman nila ipaprocess ngayon yung mga nag apply ng card lang para lang mabilis silang matapos. So, yun lang po. Baka naman gano'n yun. Meron tayo isang Or, question na baka ano, kailangan lang natin i-clarify dahil dito sa uh-huh. SSS na ito. So, yung 30,000 po na sweldo, um, technically, wala pong magbabago kasi 20,000 pa rin po yung monthly salary credit ninyo. Doon po kasi siya mag-base. Ang, mabab- ang magbabago sa inyo is yung magiging contribution nyo from the mandatory provident fund kasi yun tataas na siya. So pag nasa 30,000 na sweldo ka, ang MPF mo na salary credit is already at 30,000 which is yun na po ang gagamitin ni SSS pag kinompute for the mandatory provident fund. Pero for the regular contribution, hmm. it's still computed at 20,000 pesos. Okay, and then kay Francis Ang, if the branch that you went to, uh, Pag-ibig branch, is saying that uh, they need to prioritize those who are applying for loan for the loyalty card, you can always go to other branches. Baka sa ibang branch, ano, mas, mas uh, may opportunity ka na makapag-apply kasi wala naman masyado nag apply for loan. Again, if you really want to apply for the Pag-ibig loyalty card, it's something that is beneficial to you. So... Just, uh, you can call the branch or you can go to other branches, okay? Perfect. Now, for PhilHealth, um, nagnabasa po ng official statement, actually, this was an official statement that was out last January that PhilHealth won't be increasing its contribution uh, kasi di ba nakaano sila, they're supposed to increase their contribution um, from 4% to 4.5% this year and naglabas pa ng statement na hindi po sila muna magtataas for this year according to PhilHealth. And also, um, PhilHealth is reminding us that this is Goiter Awareness Week. Ang sintomas po ng goiter ay pagdalagas ng buho, hirap sa pagdumi, bigla ang pagtaas ng timbang, irregular menstruation, hirap sa pagdunok at mental fatigue. Iwasan po natin ang goiter, hinahinay pa sa pagkain ng mga... Uh, cruciferous vegetables, tulad ng repolyo, cauliflower, radish, labanos, soya, at soy products. So, tuwing pumabuti ang mga gulay bago kainin, kumain po tayo ng pagkain mataas sa iodine at tyro- tyrosine, tulad ng isda, itlog, at kalabasa, at of course, antioxidants uh, at mga vitamin C. Also, um, bilang beneficiary ng PhilHealth, meron po nagbibigay po siya ng 9900 coverage for congenital hypothyroidism and for thy- thyroid crisis or storm meron po kayong beneficiary 8500 and for thyroidectomy or total or complete thyroidectomy ito pa yung ooperahan na alis yung thyroid glands nyo it's 31,000. Lahat po ito ay part ng beneficyo ng PhilHealth. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to PhilHealth. Meron po silang callback channel, so 917-898-7442. You can also reach out to Action Center at philhealth.gov.ph or their official social media in Facebook, PhilHealth Official, and Team PhilHealth and Twitter. And of course, all updates can be found at their website, philhealth.gov.ph. Next po ay, uh, for all of the members of the Philippine HR Group and viewers of uh, 
HR Cafe, El Puerto Marina Beach Resort and Vacation Club is a constant partner of ours. Uh, they have resorts and uh uh, hotels in Boracay, in Pangasinan, and in Palawan. Just reach out to them to their Facebook page, El Puerto Marina Beach Resort Vacation Club. Tell them that you're a member and you'll be given special discounts and privileges. Also, if your company is starting the health and wellness program for this year, we recommend that you reach out to eShield, eShield Philippines. Uh, as a member of the Philippine HR Group, you'll get 15% exclusive discounts. eShield is a wearable device that monitors the health and wellness of your employees. eShield is a partner of the Philippines HR Group and HR Cafe to promote a healthy lifestyle to your company's employees. And if you have any questions, please post it at the main page at the Philippines HR Group Facebook page. Or if you are also in LinkedIn, we encourage you to look for us, to search us in LinkedIn on the group section, just type Philippines HR Group. We have a growing community in LinkedIn, almost 18,000 already. But in Facebook, of course, we're now more than 285,000 members in Facebook and still growing. Now, as I mentioned, we have two special guests for today and our topics about labor law. So I'm sure this will be a uh, very interesting discussion. The second part of our program is really more of, of uh, having the speakers talk about the topic and the topics about labor law. And they will be discussing about the five secrets to stop losing labor cases. Alam na po man po natin na ang labor cases is sa pinaka mahal na ano na gastusin ng isang kumpanya. Pag natalo pa isang kumpanya sa isang labor case, maaari pong hundreds of thousands to millions ang pwede niyong bayaran doon sa employee. So, um, without further ado, I will give the floor to Mentor Tina to introduce two of our labor lawyer speakers for today. Attorney Erwin Zagala and Attorney Ramon Ramirez are two of my favorite labor lawyers in the group. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce them. Attorney Erwin Zagala is a partner and has more than a decade of experience in the practice of law and working in several legal capacities. He is an NGO worker involved in human rights, an associate in a full-service law firm, a government official, a law lecturer, and most recently, the author of three books on the law. He is a graduate of UP College of Law, currently a partner at Legal Access Law Offices, as well as the founder and head writer for the publishing group Legal Guide Philippines. In 2015, he published his first book, Notary Not Included, a guide to the seven most requested legal forms, which is a complete which is a complete beginner's guide to legal documents. And in 2018, he published the complete employee discipline system, how to keep your employees in line without getting in trouble with Dole. His third book, Don't Let Your Heirs Down, is a guide to estate settlement in the Philippines. Meanwhile, attorney Ramon Ramirez is also a managing partner. He is a corporate and tax lawyer admitted to the Philippine Bar in 2007. He is an LLB from the UP College of Law a founding partner of Legal Access Law Offices, and the tax manager of the Global Corporate Controllership Group of ICTSI Global. Before ICTSI, he has almost eight years of experience as a member of the International Tax Services Group of CSIP Gores Velayo and Company, or SGV. He has also handled a number of engagements, ranging from general tax advisory and various corporate transactions, corporate organization and reorganization, inbound tax planning of multinational companies, securing favorable confirmatory rulings from the tax authorities, estate planning, and the implementation of tax audit investigations. During his time with SGV, he has chosen to be assigned to Ernst & Young in San Jose, California, as a member of the firm's prestigious Global Exchange Program. As a member of the Global Exchange Program, he was involved in several international tax engagement. As you can see, both lawyers are very young, and has extensive end-to-end -end experience with law services. So it's a pleasure for us to give the floor to Attorney Erwin Zagala and Attorney Ramon Ramirez, who will talk about how to prevent companies from losing their dole cases. Attorneys, welcome po. Thank you welcome so much. Welcome, Attorney Erwin, Attorney. 
Tina, Darwin, and uh, Rona, thank Rona. you so much. It's been a while since mm -hmm. since we've been uh, on your show. Thank you for having us back. And we, we have more than 70 year. people right now. We have more than 70 and more people and more uh, watching. And of course, I'm sure uh, hundreds of more watching the replay. So we'll give you the floor. Yes. All right. <laughs> it's back good that you, you guys mentioned that there are 70 people right now because I am addressing my first two questions to these people. Dun po sa 70 na nakikinig. How many of you feel stressed out about employee relations? Please type one in the chat box. I want to see it before we go move on. So I want to see number ones in the chat box. Kung nasa stress kayo type about one. employee relations. Pina, are you seeing uh, responses there? I'm monitoring it on my end as well. Ayan. So, so responses are coming in. Attorney Ramon, mukhang maraming nasistress mm -hmm. about employee relations. Ako, stressed ako. <laughs> <laughs> no, not. <laughs> no. Of all these people watching right now, I have another question. How many of you want to make employee relations easier? If you want it to go easier, please type number two in the chat box. Type number two. Because it can actually become easier, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And, and uh, it's just a matter of knowing certain uh, techniques and tricks. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm so happy to see the responses on the chat box. Yeah. Now, um, let me set some context here in our talk. Because the title of our talk, Attorney Ramon, it seems very, ano, no? five secrets to stop losing labor cases. So let me tell you guys a story. Mm -hmm. When Tina invited us to go back and be guests on the show, and I was wondering, ano kaya ang pwede kong i-share with Philippines HR Group that would be useful? And sobrang chamba lang, kasi a few days after that, somebody came in uh, and invited us, Attorney Ramon and I, to coffee. Yep. And uh, let's call him Chris. Yeah. So Chris invited us to coffee. And... Mm -hmm. And Chris is a relatively young entrepreneur, yes. and uh, his company is growing. Mm -hmm. So, si Chris, parang, attorneys, while I have you here, is it possible to ask for a few tips for paano ko po pwedeng alagaan yung employee relations? How to make it uh, safer, easier, and easier to run? Sabi ko, well, it depends kung ano yung ililibre mo sa amin na kape. <laughs> so, kung medyo masarap, siguro three tips. Kung super sarap, uh, Five tips. So, yeah. <laughs> in this talk, basically, I'll let you guys in on what we talked about. So, consider yourselves as if nasa coffee shop tayo and then nandun kayo sa kabilang lamesa, nakikinig kayo dun sa usapan namin, di ba? So, si Chris yun ang libre sa amin ng kape, but you guys also get the benefit from what we talked about. Kasi I'll be repeating the tips that we gave to Chris here. Does that sound good, everyone? So if you are ready na makichismis at makimarites dun sa mga tips na pinigay namin sa friend namin na si Chris, could you please type in, I'm ready, in the chat box. Type it in, guys. Yep. I'm ready. I'm ready. Kasi kami ni Atty. Ramon, I'm we're ready. also ready to ready. recount what I'm we ready. talked about with Chris, with you guys. So, hmm. uh, ayan. So, so uh, ayan. I'm seeing I'm ready in the chat box, Atty. Nice. Ramon. So I guess ready na sila. Yes, sir. And it's time for us to reveal... Secret number one. So secret number one, which we taught our friend Chris, is give peace a chance. What did we say? Give peace a chance. Okay, so it's so weird coming from two lawyers who are handling labor cases. What do you mean to say give peace a chance? Di ba may hilig daw tayo sa ano? Sa away. Away. Kailangan palaging nag-healing. Oh, pero ito, we're saying the opposite. Give peace a chance. And where does this factor in when it comes to employee relations. So here's the scene. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys have uh, received subpoenas? Yeah. Subpoenas for SENA. <laughs> yeah, SENA. Mm -hmm. So ang SENA po is uh, yung pinapadala na subpoena ng uh, NLRC mm -hmm. inviting you to a hearing. Mm -hmm. So SENA is single entry approach. Mm -hmm. So that's the department na unang pinupuntahan ng mga employees. Mm -hmm. So, Kaso so, na ba kagad yan? Actually, that's what I wanted to point out. Okay. Kasi for most people who are untrained or inexperienced about labor uh, relations, mm -hmm. kapag nakatanggap ng sabina, ano nangyayari dun? Nakangato. Ito, ito, ito. Nanginginig na yan for, ano, for, for, from just uh, seeing the paper. So we're here to give you an alternative way of looking at things. 
So when you receive a subpoena, okay, ang process kasi sa labor, it's multi, multi-tiered, mm-hmm. okay? So yung unang set ng mga proceedings, it's what you call mediation. What we call that? Mediation. Okay. So ano ang ibig sabihin ng mediation? Mm-hmm. Ang mediation po, walang magkaaway. Mm-hmm. I repeat, walang magkaaway. The, the uh, mediator is merely inviting the two parties, usually employer and mm-hmm. employee, to sit down and let's talk about it. Hindi ba mag-aaway doon? Hindi. Okay. <laughs> Hindi, mamaya pa yun. Okay. Mamaya pa yun. Okay. So, so for mediation, essentially, what's happening is, oh, sige po, what do you want? Mm-hmm. Kayo po, what do you want? Okay. So when you receive the first subpoena, I want you guys to give peace a chance. Okay? Yung ibang tao kasi, simula pa lang, mga away na yan, natin yung away, diba? medyo, medyo pataasan na yan ng iri, and then uh, medyo... Pala. Defensive na kagad. Oh, oh, or combative na kagad. So our first tip to our friend Chris is, try to use the initial stages of a proceeding as info-gathering sessions. Use it as what? Info-gathering sessions or information-gathering sessions. Yes. Hindi po para mang away. So the way we, well, we have teams of lawyers and paralegals who attend uh, hearings on behalf of clients. And, and our, our way of training our team is, for SENA, we use it as an info-gathering opportunity. Mm-hmm. Ang ibig sabihin po nun, sit down and listen. You will be using your listening skills during the mediation. Kasi our intention is to try and explore opportunities for a quick win. Mm-hmm. Ang ibig sabihin nun, kung sa SENA level pa lang, pwede nang pag-usapan at mahinto yung kaso, that would be super preferable. Mm. Sa SENA pa lang, kasi again, the vibe is, ano po ba ang gusto ninyo? Ano po ba ang gusto ninyo? Let's talk about it. Possibly, kung ito yung ano mo, yung demands mo, ito naman yung kanya, if you can meet in the middle, case closed. Mm. Okay? So give peace a chance. Now, I hear some of you objecting na parang, Eh, attorney, parang hiyaan naman to. Yung empleyado na yung may kasalanan, tapos pupunta ako doon na, ano, na makikinig. Hindi ba dapat ito na yung pagkakataon ko? Don't worry. There's lots of opportunities after mediation na mag kung gusto ninyo. We call that arbitration later on. However, yung demeanor that we recommend for SENA purposes sa mediation, info-gathering, tanungin lang po, wala pong masama na magpakumbaba to get information. Mm-hmm. Again, what we're doing here is strategic in nature. You're, we're not encouraging you to do this because ah, oh, kailangan mabait ka. It's not about bait eh, or mm-hmm. uh, uh, getting approval from the other parties or even the mediator. It's all about strategy. Eh. Kasi if you can find a way to uh, fulfill the needs of the employee, it will actually save your company time. It will save you money and it will save you stress most definitely. definitely. So that's the tip. Give peace a chance. And you and we invite you to take a look at SENA proceedings as an info gathering session. Now, may mga nagtatanong din ato yung naman kapag oh. nakakatanggap, diba? Ato yung dapat ko bang attendan to? <laughs> diba? <laughs> As if it's an option. <laughs> okay, guys. So <laughs> let me put... Papansinin ko ba ito? Oh, oh, record ba ito? Uh-huh. So let me put that into context. Again, don't miss the chance to gather information. Mm-hmm. Wars are won based on information. And yes. the more information you have, the higher your probability of getting a win-win uh, uh, settlement mm-hmm. in place. True. So attendan po ninyo. I repeat, wag nyo pong baliwalain. It's a fantastic opportunity na meron pong referee. Most probably, it did not work out eh. Naka yung dalawa lang ng employee nag-uusap. Kaya nga umabot ng, ano eh, ng, ng dole eh. Oh. O tsaka ng, ng sena. Now this time, you have a referee in the middle na kapag medyo masyado tumataas yung temperature ng isa, pwede yung pababain. And, and, and that's super useful to have. And again, you're there, hindi po para mga away. You're there to gather information. So, attorney, uh, hmm. just a question. So, kung ako yung uh, may-ari hmm. nung kum- kumpanya or nung negosyo and nakatanggap ako ng uh, itong uh, sabina, okay. um, do I have to, kailangan ba ako na? Ako na. Or Kasi, kunwari, stress na stress ka talaga. Yes, eh. so, eh, or 
kinakabahan talaga ako. Or, or may, may, may init ka talaga. May, may oh. init ako sa empleyo. Do. I mean, baka may masabi ako. Hindi, ko, hindi ako makapag-info gathering as, oh. as you want it. Okay. Do I go by myself? Required ba kung sino yung nakasulat? Are there options? Are there options? Okay, that's a fantastic question. So here's the magical thing about legal proceedings. Hmm. You can actually go there without going. Uh, what, do you, what do I mean? How do you do that? Okay. You send someone in your place. So how do you do that? You issue a special power of attorney or SPA. Mm-hmm. Authorizing someone else na mag in your set in your stead. So if you feel that you are not emotionally, mentally, I don't know, spiritually capable of, of gathering info in the uh, mediation session, uh, our advice is just to uh, send a substitute. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Sinia, yeah, like, uh, I guess the HR professionals, uh, HR, HR professionals employees. would be a good, no, would uh-huh. be a good choice. Uh, but senior management, uh, senior management could, could also be. Well, of course, if you were to choose the professionals most suited, magkarap ka nung sanay talaga dyan, which is lawyers. Mm-hmm. So, if you do have the privilege of having lawyers on your team, I would highly suggest considering sending them in your stead if you feel you cannot handle the mediation. Mm-hmm. Now, is a lawyer required? For mediation purposes, they're not. They're not. And depending on the situation, actually, sometimes nga, uh, we discourage lawyers appearing. Because eh, sometimes malakas masyado yung dating pag lawyer na parang mm-hmm. oh, nung lawyer up na to, so ako na rin. So oh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it it may lead to escalations. Mm-hmm. So lawyers are not required at the early stages. They are required later on though for ano, for uh, position papers. Mm-hmm. However, at the early stages, tanchahin na nampu niyo. But again, um, for my tip. Just use it for info gathering. Whether you do it with a lawyer, you do it by yourselves, that's totally fine. Okay? Nice. And don't lose, ano, don't lose sleep over the fact na parang, ano yun? Parang ano na lang matitirang pride sa akin. It's not about pride. It's not about pride. It's about, it's about strategy. About, it's about strategy and about info gathering. Okay? So I hope they like tip number one. Give okay. peace a chance. I like it. Okay, so let's move on to tip number two. Mm-hmm. And tip number two is, Know the backstory. So, nung kinwento namin kay Chris ito, know the backstory, anong story pinag-uusapan natin, attorney? So, so I'm going to ano, uh, uh, give you a quotable quote. <laughs> Sige. Uh, it was uttered by a very wise man. A wise oh, man. Okay. Okay. Who's this wise man? Okay. I'll know later. Uh, Sige. Okay. So, the quote is, a violation never lives in isolation. <laughs> wow, a, a violation never Lives, lives in, in isolation. isolation. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, who uh, said that? Uh, attorney Irwin Sagal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I knew it. <laughs> so let me give some context. So, yeah. kunare, uh, yung employee no, nagkaroon ng violation. Hmm. So, my tip to Chris was, you never look at it as if ito lang na nakalagay siya sa isang container na ito lang talaga yung violation. No, you always look beyond. And when you look at uh, the story in terms of employee relations, pag mga empleyado, you take a look at the files. Ano tawag din sa files na yun? 201. 201 uh-huh. files, yes. So, usually, sa 201 files, it contains a history ng empleyado. Ilang mga violations na ba yung nagawa before? Mm-hmm. Di ba? Mm-hmm. And here's what I want you to look for. Are there instances in the past wherein the same violation or same problem crop up? Because the way you deal with the violation today has to take into account the history. Mm-hmm. Kasi, kunwari ito, late lang. Late. Mm-hmm. Diba? Matuterminate ka ba naman ng late lang? Baka hindi. Like, yeah. By itself. Mm-hmm. Diba? However, yung late na yun, eh baka naman pang panggwalo. Or pang siyam, 364th time. <laughs> for the week. <laughs> diba? oh, for, for the week. The week. Yeah. <laughs> for the week. Diba? But, right. but are you getting my point? Diba? You have to look at it uh, as part of a bigger story. Why? Because it aids you in the decision-making process. Because mm-hmm. some violations by themselves may seem light. However, when taken as part of a whole bigger story, it might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Mm-hmm. So, pwede ka terminate for, for being late. Mm-hmm. If it's the latest in a string of lates and uh, it's a vi- gross violation na of your uh, attendance procedures, mm-hmm. Yeah, so so um, uh, the legal doctrine that's connected with this is what we call the totality of offenses doctrine. 
the totality of offenses yes. doctrine. Uh, right? what that, write that down, guys. What that means is the law gives you the privilege of taking a look at the history. And kapag lumalabas na paulit-ulit pala itong violations, mm -hmm. you can actually use the whole set as a ground for discipline processes. Mm -hmm. okay. So again, back to the, uh, no, the back to the quote, mm -hmm. a violation does not live in isolation. isolation. Okay. Nakita mo yung rhyme, bro? Yeah. May, may rhyme yun, bro? That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, you so, should uh, copyright that. <laughs> yes. So, guys, ano, I hope you guys are still with us. If you are, please type it in. Violation does not live in isolation. Mm -hmm. If you're getting everything and you're following, I hope okay lang yung, yung ano natin, ano, pacing for yeah, this. So. And, uh, I, I'm waiting for, I'm waiting for uh, the chat box to go crazy with violation does not live in isolation. And if I see that, again, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it's uh, coming in. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's our signal to go to tip number three, Attorney Ramon. What do you think? Are you ready for tip number three? Um, no, I'm just kidding. Let's go. <laughs> so, tip number three deals with consistency, and consistency is key when it mm -hmm. comes to employee discipline. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? Have you guys ever had an employee in a super galing? Uh, parang, oh my god, kaya niya ito lahat. Uh, mm. Kahit ano, iba ito kong assignment. Super bibo. Super bibo, uh, super, super galing, galing yeah. di ba? Yeah. And, and parang, uh, kung kunwari, siya yung may hawak ng employee discipline mo, mm -hmm. wala kang kabay. Yeah. Kaya to, kaya to. Ang galing tong batang to. Eh. Yeah. And you can actually go home, hihintay mo na lang yung report after. Mm. Kaya eh. But here's the thing, hindi naman laging nandyan yung magaling mong empleyado to handle that. Baka mabigyan ng uh, better offer. Diba? Oo, oh, hindi okay, na, diba? Na, Napanggit na, niya naman. Oh, yeah. oh, right, and right. then biglang magsabi, diba? Na pwede po bang wala ng 30 days. <laughs> 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 diba? So, so, you can't, it's very difficult to rely on star performers all of the time. Yes. Diba? Right. Pag yan wala, laglag ka. So, if you've been too dependent on a star performer in the past, pag yan wala, baka magulat ka kapag may incident na lumabas, it might have a different outcome. Nasaan na yung documentation nito? Nasaan na yung, ano, nasa na yung uh, supporting papers? Mm -hmm. So our tip for, uh, for Chris when he asked was, consistency is key. How do, you install, uh, how do you implement consistency in employee relations? You rely on systems. You rely on what? Systems. Sir. Okay. You introduce legal systems into your business. That way, hindi ka nakaasa sa magaling na tao nakaasa ka sa magaling na sistema. sistema. Okay. So how does a good and strong system look like in real life? It's essentially full of templates. Mm -hmm. Okay. So kung kunwari may notice to explain, mm -hmm. alam mo ngayon kung paano gawin. Hindi ka aasa, ay magaling kasi si Sheila. Alam na niyang gawin yan. Oo. Uh -huh. And grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. No. Try to make it easy for your employees. Try to have templates in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to templates, possibly may mga procedures na kayo procedures. na nakabackup that a person can recommend. Mm -hmm. The ideal, the ideal setup to have is, uh, the ideal setup to have is, if a new person comes in mm -hmm. after a little bit of training of, or orientation, would they uh, be able to run your discipline systems mm -hmm. as well as others? Siguro with guidance, of mm -hmm. course. It's just sa simula hindi naman instant yan na makakaya kagad. Eh. But kahit pa paano mahahabol ba with the same quality and same assurance that you have for your older employees mm -hmm. if you are able to say yes to that then i would i would say na you guys are doing a fantastic job when it comes to your systems now i'm oh, sorry go ahead i think uh, having those systems in place it uh, it dovetails with yung second tip natin in knowing the backstory mm -hmm. diba kasi when you have a lot of systems in place um Diyan din pumapasok yung, like, uh, yung documentation natin of mm -hmm. things, di ba? And which is also, again, very important when we, uh, when we know the backstory. Mm -hmm. True. And um, I have a special message for companies who are scaling right now or who are hiring kasi lumalaki yung team, lumalaki yung operations. Listen to this very, very carefully. If there are system mistakes right now, now is the time to fix it bago kayo mag-expand. Kasi if you expand with the wrong systems in place, you're actually replicating the mistakes as you go along. True. 
And the more na dumadami yung empleyado with, the more, uh, with more systemic mistakes, the harder it is to fix. Trust mm-hmm. us. That's what people hire us to do. And, and kapag medyo madami na, madali pang ayusin, kunwari 10, 20 employees. Actually, 20, medyo ma- may, may, ano na yan, may kagat na na konti yan. Mm-hmm. But could you imagine the wrong things that you're doing, you're implementing it for 100, 200, 300 people. And even worse, multiple thousands. branches mm-hmm. with thousands of people. It, at some point, it might even be impossible to fix. So now is the best time to take a look if you are expanding. And at least, yung madala ninyong systems are the right ones. Mm-hmm. That way, kahit ilang violations pa yung mangyari in any department, any sector, any branch, you can rest assured, makaka-uwi ka, makakatulog ka, na the systems will be taking care of it. Hindi kayo nakaasa sa galing no uh, HR or manager na naka-assign in that case. Mm-hmm. Because that varies wildly. Mm-hmm. Diba? True. Uh-oh. Even within the same department, eh, hindi pare-pareho ng skills ang ano, um, mga employees or officers. And it doesn't really mean that they're going to be there forever. Diba? Isa pa yun, uh-huh. diba? No matter No matter how much we wish otherwise. Diba? Nakakaroon ng turnover talaga. Either uh, better offer or possibly nag-retire. Diba? Or Many reasons. Many reasons. Many reasons. Uh-huh. Many reasons. So, you cannot expect to be dependent on good people all the time. The systems have to carry the load. Yes. And for this, actually, I have another quote. Hmm. For this. Another quote? Oh, oh. Okay. I, I, another wise man. Wise, another okay. wise man. Okay. Sige, so, go. you do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. Ooh. I repeat. Damn, you, I like do not, do, you do not rise to the level of your goals you fall to the level of your systems. And that comes from James Clear <laughs> in the book, uh, Atomic Habits. I, I, I was reading it a couple of days ago. So, sabi ko, perfect to. Kasi, um, um, malaki talaga yung ano, uh, effect ng systems. Even for legal. Mm-hmm. Even for legal. Yep. Actually, not a lot of pe- uh, people realize that dapat illegal may systems dapat yung in place. Yeah, in an ideal world, yes. Dapat. In an ideal yes. world, yes. So, akala, ko, ikaw, akala ko, attorney Erwin Sagala na naman itong uh, bagong po. No, po. we share the limelight. Oh. <laughs> no, I love James Clear. He's, he, he's a really good author. Maraming matututunan siya. So, that's it for tip number three. Consistency mm-hmm. is key. Do not rely on people. Rely on consistent systems. I love that one. Now, I think we can go on to uh, tip number four. Mm-hmm. And tip number four deals with evidence. Okay. There have been a lot of cases wherein um, we're asked to step in as legal and magugulat kami. Mm. So, nasa na po yung audit trail na ito? Or nasa na yung papers? Mm. Wala na po. Okay. O, oh, may testigo po ba na pwede ma-invite? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, pag kinausap namin yung mga employees who are uh, privy to the violation and uh, whatever happened, wala nang gusto magsalita. Bakit? Bakit? Ako eh, kinausap na pala nung empleyado uh, na may violation. Trinetin na. No? I don't know kung threat ba talaga or baka hiyaan. But the point is, you have tainted evidence. Mm-hmm. And even though um, labor proceedings are actually administrative in nature, mm-hmm. what that means is mas mababa po yung level of evidence that is needed versus criminal cases right. or civil cases, those in court. Even if mababa siya, there's still a certain level or standard that we have to abide by. Right. Okay. So, here's the thing. How do we preserve evidence? Okay. And, and the answer might surprise some people. Mm-hmm. The answer, one of them, one of them is preventive suspension. Mm-hmm. Most um, uh, HR newbies, ang iniisip kasi, preventive suspension Ah, sige na, alisin mo muna yan, may violation yan. Mm. Parang pamparusa eh. Di ba? Uh, 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 muna bayaran na sweldo yan. Di ba? Magpahinga muna siya. Mag-investiga muna tayo. Uh, uh, oh. But the way we use it, uh, preventive suspension, it, it's, it's actually an investigation tool mm-hmm. to preserve evidence. So what, I, I'm giving you guys a new way of looking at preventive suspension. So preventive suspension isolates the evidence from the uh, accused employee. Mm-hmm. Para hindi niya pwedeng tamper, eliminate, or influence. So, when is preventive suspension allowed? Okay, ito naman yung magandang usapan. Okay. Kasi actually, nung tinanong ko ni Chris, we had a long discussion. Mm-hmm. Kasi for new entrepreneurs or those not schooled in labor law, ang dating sa kanila, preventive suspension, 
pwedeng parusa na rin. Mm-hmm. Or it's applicable anytime that you feel like it as an employer. It's not. Okay? So, it's misconception not. number one is the preventive suspension is suspension na parusa. It's not. Because preventive suspension is imposed preventively. Ibig sabihin nun, before any decision is made. So, so it's given while ini investigate So, take note of my words. Mm-hmm. While ini investigate And while we're still investigating it, that means na wala pa tayong decision or wala pa tayong finding kung sino talaga yung may kasalanan. Okay? So, preventive, it doesn't mean parusa na siya. Okay? It's just a means to preserve evidence while you're investigating. Mm-hmm. Eh, attorney, paano naman yung suspension na parusa? Naririnig ko, uh, sinuspend ako ni ma'am. Blah, blah, blah. Iba yun. That comes oh. after investigation. So, mm-hmm. it's suspension as a penalty. Mm-hmm. Now, so it's suspension as a penalty, prevented suspension as an investigatory tool. Or yes. investigation tool. Yes. Okay. So, if, if you're a layman, you're looking at it, Pareho lang tingnan yan. Yung empleyado, nakaupo sa bahay. Hindi pinapasok. Hindi pinapasok. Um, Kinuha yung cellphone. <laughs> pwede ba yun? <laughs> Hindi naman siguro, pare. Hindi <laughs> yung company issue. Company oh, phone. Oh. Ah, baka pwede, baka pwede. But, but legally, it takes on a totally different character. Oo nga, nakaupo sa bahay ang empleyado. But yung first instance, preventive suspension, wala pang kasalanan yan. Kung baga sa basketball, binibench lang muna yan para makalaro yung <laughs> investigators. So to speak, so to speak, okay? The second instance is, huli na, alam namin talaga ikaw may kasalanan, eto na yung parusa. Mm, okay, clear. Okay. So that's uh, to do away with misconception number one. Marami po naguguluhan dyan, so we took the time to to clear that up. We even cleared that up with Chris when we were talking. So so the second misconception is, it can be impossible anytime you want. No. Under the labor code, there are certain requirements for you to be able to impose preventive suspension. Mm-hmm. There has to be an immediate threat okay. to persons or property. Ah, okay, so okay. so take take note of the things that I said. Huh? Those uh, carry legal implications, each one of those. Okay, so there has to be an immediate threat. Ano ibig sabihin ng immediate, attorney? Um, andyan na. Andyan na. Ito na. It's in your face. It's not hypothetical. Mm-hmm. It's not uh, uh, parang uh, nagbabakasakali lang tayo. Immediate nandito na yung threat. Mm-hmm. And there's a second part to that sentence. Mm-hmm. Two persons or property. Okay. So the immediate threat should be aimed towards persons or property. Mm-hmm. Let's give some examples. Okay, please. So uh, let's go with ano muna? With immediate threat to persons. Mm-hmm. So may dalawang tao. Uh, empleyado sila ng isang company. And then the other day, uh, muntik magsaksakan sa pantry. Kasi nag-aasaran and then napikon yung isa, eh, malapit yung ano, butter knife sa, sa kitchen. And then naghabunan sila sa kitchen. Oh. Okay. Ano kaya, anong klaseng kumpanya yan? Ganyan yung mga empleyado nyo. <laughs> Actually, curious din ako kung ano mangyari kapag nakatama yung butter knife. <laughs> But, okay, for oh, example. Okay, okay. So, okay. So, nahinto lang yung away kasi uh, pumasok yung security nga. Okay. Inawat. Inawat. Okay, okay. So, naawat yung dalawang ano, empleyado. Hmm. So, as a manager, kunwari ikaw yung manager, hmm. okay, humupa na. Okay. Uh, hindi na galit. Yung pinaghiwalay ko na. <laughs> okay. Dito ka. Oh. Would it be a good idea kung papapasukin mo? Oh, balik na kayo sa work. Hmm. Kaya magkatabi sila ng workstation. Oh. Oh. Would, that, would that be a wise decision? Probably not. Kasi uh, may may immediate threat ng saksakan. Two persons. Ba? Yeah. Two oh. persons. Okay. So, in this case, that's a good example of when you can impose preventive suspension because there's an immediate threat mm-hmm. to persons. In which case, there was an incident. Possibly bang may tamaan dito ng ano, penalties? Yes. Yes. Meron eh, oh. di ba? It depends on the findings. Ano makita mo sa CCTV or, or witnesses? There might be a finding na, oops, nako, isa dito, uh, siya yung nag-instigate. Mm. So, possibly may tamaan. So, for me, while you're investigating that, and para hindi na lang magbanggaan at magpataya ng butter knife, yung dalawang employee, um, it would be good to send them home in the meantime via preventive suspension. Makes sense. I hope that makes it clear. Uh, yun po ang essence ng preventive suspension. Um, uh, another example is, 
to property. Okay. Paano naman yan? Okay. So, are your company properties at risk? Hmm. If yes, pwede mo na naman gawin yan na preventive suspension. So, kung sakali, yung kaso is very interesting. Yung company driver, hmm. uh, uh, nag-graduate yung anak okay. with honors. Uy, wow. Uh, Congratulations. Sabi yeah. ng anak, pa, tagal ko na gustong mag sa beach. Oo ba? Uh, kailan mo gusto yan? Tinaiming na hawak niya yung company vehicle. Pero okay. 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 uwi to, uh, hindi ko nababalik sa kasa. Oo, oh, oh, diretso oh. sila sa sa beach. The whole family nag-outing using the company vehicle. And what's funny is may logo pa yun. May logo pa. Yeah. Oh, oh, so, so sabi naman ng driver, okay yan, free advertising yan para sa amo. Ha? <laughs> Nag-isip sa mapa na. Nag-isip siya. Okay. okay. So, nahuli eventually. Hmm. Why? Nakalimutan niya na may dashcam pala. So, nung in-audit yung dashcam, bakit may beach dito? Eh, warehouse delivery lang tong ano, kotse natin. And then, after invest, uh, while it was being investigated, yun nga, kinakausap yung empleyado, eh, lumalabas, they, uh, the, company, uh, the employee uses it for personal purposes mm-hmm. and uh, uh, errands. So, for me, in this case, I think it would be appropriate to impose a preventive suspension because there's an immediate threat to company property. Mm-hmm. Isipin mo habang ini-investigate po, eh, maglalakwat siya uli yan. Mm-hmm. Diba? Mm-hmm. So, if you feel that company assets are at risk, that is the uh, way to go. Or maybe an- another also example if it's kahera. That's or, another diba? example. Uh, Kunari, uh, you're uh, suspecting uh, na yung kahera ninyo is kumukupit. kumukupit. Oh. So, uh, pwede mo sabihin doon sa kahera, Uy, ini-investigate ka ha. Pero habang ini-investigate ka, huwag kang kukupit ha. <laughs> doesn't make sense legally. And I think the law first saw this and gave you the opportunity to protect your company assets. So in this case, protect the evidence using preventive suspension. What happens kapag may preventive suspension? Bahay lang siya, di ba? Mm-hmm. Bahay lang siya. Yeah. So that person is effectively prevented from doing a couple of things. Number one, influencing witnesses. Mm-hmm. So sometimes kasi, di ba? Uh, kapag ini-investigate, pupuntahan yung mga katrabaho. No? Uy, huwag ka, kang titistigo. Huwag <laughs> kang titistigo laban sa akin. Ha? Mm-hmm. So that really happens. So that's one immediate benefit. Eh. He won't be able to do that uh, within the workplace. Sakaling wala siya doon. Another thing is uh, company records. Uh, if, the port, if the employee has access to audit trails, to company logs, logbook, di ba? Or CCTV footage. Kapag nandun pa rin sa premises yan, there's a very real risk that no, matamper. evidence could be tampered, mm-hmm. altered, or eliminated yep. in, in totality. Mm-hmm. So preventive suspension preserves your evidence mm-hmm. properly. Okay? Agree. Ayan. So I, I hope that's, uh, uh, that's a good uh, tip for you guys. Mm-hmm. Now, let me move on to tip number five. So tip number five is get familiar with the terrain. The terrain? The terrain. Why are we talking about terrain? Okay. <laughs> so not a lot of people know that employee relations is actually a journey. Mm-hmm. There's a starting point. There's an ending point. Mm-hmm. Eh, kami po, na mga pinagpala na nabigyan ng oras to examine this in law school in detail, mm-hmm. we see the journey as one one complete cycle. Mm-hmm. Parang, oh, ito yung dapat una mangyari. Ito next, ito next. But for people kasi who haven't taken a deep dive into the law, parang mm-hmm. sa kanila, it, it looks random. Mm-hmm. Oh, biglang may investigation. Oh, may admin hearing bigla. Oh, ano nga ba yung notice na biglang dumating? No, there's a certain procedure that governs all of that. And it has to happen in sequence. If you don't do it in sequence, you actually end up losing cases. Yeah. And if you are not familiar with the journey that happens, essentially, you're undermining your chances for success. Why? Ano ang kulang kapag hindi mo naiintindihan kung saan ka papunta? Ang kulang po is confidence. Yep. True. And when you lack confidence in employee relation matters, actually, naamoy ng kalaban niya. Diba? Parang nakita ng empleyado, oh, this HR doesn't know what he or she is doing. Parang pwede kang paikot-paikutin. Diba? Yeah. Yep. Or maybe the employees just waiting for you to miss a few steps and wala, they'll use that against you in, in labor proceedings. So our tip for Chris is get familiar with the whole employee relations journey. 
there's a certain sequence of events that needs to happen. Get familiar with that. What are some examples of milestones that need to be covered when you're dealing with employee relations? Well, number one is the notices. May dalawang notice yan na essential na dapat nandoon. That's a notice to explain and the notice of the decision Decision, or termination. What about hearings? Diba? Naririnig natin in certain cases. Oh, bakit walang admin hearing yan? Mm-hmm. There are certain cases where in admin hearings are required. Mm-hmm. And there are certain cases na hindi siya required. You have to know the difference. Mm-hmm. Even for investigations, kailangan you know what to look for. Otherwise, wala eh. Nag-investigate ka pero wala ka rin namang mailalagay. Did na. you do it? Yan lang yun. Yan lang yung dulo. <laughs> ano gagawin mo pag sinabing no? Diba? It, won't, it won't hold water in a legal proceeding. You, what, what you guys have to remember is all legal proceedings deal with evidence. Evidence is the currency when it comes to uh, legal proceedings. True. Kung wala kang bala, wala kang pambayad na, uh, kung baga, there's nothing for you to exchange in the whole proceedings in, in the form of evidence, the chances of you winning are pretty slim. Mm. Kasi what you also have to remember is in labor proceedings, the burden is always on the employer. Nasa atin po yung bigat to prove that the employee was rightfully terminated. Yes. In fact, in fact, minsan kahit mahina yung evidence ng ano ng employee, mm-hmm. pero mas mahina yung evidence ng employer, mm-hmm. pwede pang manalo yung employee. Kasi again, the burden is with the employer. Trabaho po ninyo to keep backing it up mm-hmm. and to be able to present it in the right way. Mm-hmm. That's why kung mapapansin niyo lahat ng tips na binigay namin kay Chris, Give peace a chance. It's a chance for a quick negotiation. Baka kasi sa simula pa lang, matapos na. Next is know the backstory. It's all about getting strong evidence. You document everything. You you put it in a file folder. That way you can reference it moving forward. It's all about strong evidence uh, on your side. Next is consistency is key. You want to be able to produce more or less the same outcome using the same systems almost all the time. So ayusin mo yung sistema mo, that way, hindi ka umaasa sa galing ng tao. Umaasa ka sa galing ng sistema. And when it comes to uh, court proceeding, you have ammunition to expend in the engagement. Yeah. Next is, we talked about segregating for safety. Yun nga, di ba? Ipreventive suspension natin to be able to keep the evidence strong and untainted. Huwag niyo gagalawin yung evidence, employee, di ba? So hihiwalay na kita. That way, itong evidence, I will be able to present it buong-buo and untainted. So, and the fifth rule with uh, Chris is getting familiar with the process. So, what's the most uh, low, lowest hanging fruit when it comes to getting familiar with the process? Get a copy of the labor code. Yep. Basahin niyo. Basahin niyo yung labor code from front to, uh, to end. Okay, so here's the problem mm. with that. Yes. Even as a law student, I, I don't know if you feel this. Uh, uh, you felt it when we were in law school together. But the first run through the labor code, it did not make sense to me. Even as a labor labor uh, uh, law student, ha, may, medyo technical kasi. Eh. Mm-hmm. Yung pagbasa lang mismo ng law, mm-hmm. by itself, it may be a little difficult to grasp. Mm-hmm. What, may, what, uh, what, helped makes, um, uh, what helped me understand the labor law is by reading the annotations and the cases. Mm-hmm. Nung nagkaroon ng mga kwento behind it, nagkaroon ng, ano, ng explanations, I gets ko na, ano ba ibig sabihin ng preventive suspension? Mm-hmm. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng due notice? Mm-hmm. So, so if kaya po ng skill level ninyo to read labor law mm-hmm. in, ano, in its raw form, go ahead. By all means. By all means. Ang um, next step is probably read annotations, mm-hmm. which can help you understand and give context to, to what the law says. Another way of doing it is, siguro, um, buying books. We actually have a book available. Um, yeah. It's on our website, www.eagleguy.ph, and it's called the Employee Discipline System. What we did there is we explained what the labor code says using layman language. Mm-hmm. So basically, tinawid na namin from super technical, kwento-kwento lang kami. That way, even non-lawyers would be able to understand labor law. So if you're able to get a copy of that, I think it would be a fantastic resource. At least you can treat it as an entry-level uh, text. Then eventually you can graduate to the labor law yeah. uh, text itself. 
But I think we have something easier for everyone. Even better. Uh oh. Kasi minsan yung libro, di ba? Mahirap pa sa akin, mahirap na po It's sometimes easier na upo na lang, have someone tell the story to you. And that's exactly what we're offering on February 2, 2023. So from 9 o'clock to 5 o'clock, we'll be delivering a complete employee discipline workshop at UP Diliman. It's going to be held at the University Hotel. So what will we be tackling in this workshop? So we'll be tackling the contents of the book. Mm -hmm. Ang target audience po namin, dalawa. How many? Dalawa. Labor newbies mm -hmm. and veterans who want to validate what they're doing, kung tama pa ba, or to update what they're doing. So in the complete employee discipline system workshop, we'll be tackling uh, uh, the process from start to finish. Remember tip number five, we wanted you to get familiar with the terrain. Yeah. We can't get any more literal because in the workshop, we actually give out a map. May mapa na. Okay, guys, ito po yung uh, employee relations journey from start to finish. Ano ba susunod dyan, attorney? Just go one step down. Go to then, the next one. Uh, go to the <laughs> next one. That map is what we'll be talking about for the rest of that day. It's just one day, 9 to 5. Um, uh, uh, the good thing about it is that it's going to be face-to-face. -face. So there's an opportunity for you to bring up Attorney, paano ba itong ganito? Attorney, paano pag ganyan? So, essentially, it's a workshop, pero parang consultation na rin siya for the whole day. Kasi we'll be talking about all the different aspects and uh, giving opportunities for people to chime in and get clarifications. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Ms. Tina, Darwin, and uh, Rana, uh, I think we have a slide of, of that later on coming up. We'll, we'll give everyone a chance to be able to go to the landing page and sign up if they are interested in the workshop. For the first, how many bands are in everyone? I think we can accommodate uh, uh, 15 as of now. Mm -hmm. 15, okay. Ayun, so, so going back to the tips that we gave Chris, again, it's give peace a chance. Mm -hmm. Know the backstory, consistency is key. Segregate for safety and get familiar with the terrain. Now, I will tell you what I told Chris. Law and legal uh, labor relations, it's actually more of an art rather than a science. Kasi minsan, kahit na alam na alam mo na, uh, the way you apply it matters. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, uh, as with any kind of art, it's all about practicing. So, so if you are an HR practitioner, use every opportunity to learn and perfect your craft. Uh, use every uh, incident, every violation as a chance to be able to make your systems stronger. Wag po kayo matakot. Treat everything as a learning uh, event. And when you start doing that, mawawala po yung takot ninyo. Because everything, if you treat it, if you treat it as learning, you will never lose. Yeah. You will never lose. It's always something that I can implement here, here, and here. And if you need help, don't be afraid to ask for mentors. Help. So if you have a lawyer, if you have a more senior HR staff available to give uh, uh, advice on that, uh, put down your pride. Ask for help so that your learning gets uh, your learning curve gets shorter and you get to win more cases easily. So that's it, Tina. That's it for us. Bakami mga tanong that you guys want to handle. I'm so, uploading I'm, I'm uploading the details. Ayan. Can we upload it? Yan. Attorney, Ayan. ano, uh, yes. maraming nagtatanong. So, yes. we yes. will start with the questions. Pero just to clarify lang, diba, you mentioned about preventive suspension. Yeah. Okay, ang hmm. problema, sometimes a company catches an employee doing something uh, questionable. Mm -hmm. Minsan, hindi maganda yung timing the day before yung sahod. So, siyempre, pag oh, binigyan okay. mo ng preventive suspension, mahuhold yung sahod. And may mga taong nagagalit. Kasi hindi okay. pa naman sure kung guilty or hindi. hindi. Pero, you know, the next day, lalabas na yung sahod for that cut-off. What would mm -hmm. be your advice to mga companies na who are placed in a difficult position? Kasi mali lang talaga yung timing. Okay. So, let me uh, put this into context. Yung tao na subject of investigation, siya ba yung may hawak ng payroll? Or siya yung tatanggap yeah, ng payroll? Nawalan ng, kunyari, cashier. Tapos, okay. kulang ng pera. Or messenger. Tapos, nalaman pala that day na hindi pala deposit yung pera. Binigay sa kanya. Inuwi pala niya. 
Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yun nga, and then of course, you do the incident report, the NTE, and then of course, issue the preventive suspension. Pero before, pero yung timing medyo malapit sa pagbabayad ng sahod. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, how one thing the that... Treat- yeah. For the sahod. Can the company not withhold that payroll while the person is on preventive suspension? Mm, okay. So, um, the law is very cognizant that uh, things have also have to be practical. Correct? Hindi naman parang sinabi ng law na ito na yan and it's always in absolutes. So, what we usually tell our clients and students is you have to balance it with practicality. So in this case, kung sakaling kliyente or student ko itong nagtatanong ng ganito, mm. what would benefit the company more? Kasi what you mm. have to understand is preventive suspension is a tool given to the employer. Mm. So as a tool, you have the discretion whether to use it or not. So mm. babalansin ko ngayon yun. What would benefit the company better? Would it benefit mm-hmm. the company kung sakaling itutuloy natin yung preventive suspension? Come what may? Ano man yung consequences? Oo. So, uh, the company can withhold the pay. Kasi just in case lang, di ba kayo may ninakaw. Tapos na-proven talaga may ninakaw. Tapos uh, yung yung mahuhold na cut-off na yun, yun yung magiging final pay, correct? So the company so, can... Assuming withhold. na ma-terminate. Oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. Kasi minsan pag-release mo after the tina papasok, okay. kasi nagkakao na tapos wala pang maibabayad, nagpo-pos muwi ng probinsya. Mhm. Diba? If there's something that you hold for then kahit na papaano. Yeah, for me that's Tama, a reason. Okay lang po, po no, if a person is under preventive suspension, the company can hold the salary. The, the next I would say yes. As long as the period is uh, let me balance that out ha kasi may mga mm-hmm. ibang companies or HR uh, practitioners nakakalimutan din naman that everything has to be in balance. Mm-hmm. So, a preventive suspension, just ko, ilang araw na, dalawang buwan na, tatlong mm-hmm. buwan na. Mali po yun. Mali po yun. Preventive mm-hmm. suspension. Oo, oh, oh, 30 days lang yun. Diba? And, and um, ang advice namin, for people um, uh, under our tutelage, yung mga tinuturuan namin, ayaw namin na sinasagad ng preventive suspension. If mm-hmm. you can finish the investigation within a few days, wag na ninyo sagarin yung 30 days. Mm. That way, mm-hmm. you get to a decision earlier, you can deal with it and move on. So for this instance, di ba kunwari mahuhold yung, ano, yung payroll, magkakaproblema pa yan kapag umabot ka na ng susunod na payroll. Posible, mm-hmm. naku, ano ba yan? Hinuhold yung sweldo, hindi pa naman ako guilty, whatever, di ba? Ah. And uh, mm-hmm. for some instances, makakatanggap ka na ng sabina niya, nagsumbong na sa dole. Na, yes, oh, when it, constructive it, dismissal it, naman daw. Yes, when in fact it was just uh, holding it as part of investigations. One way of dealing with that, finish the investigation as soon as possible. That way, mm-hmm. you get to you get to the bottom of things. You get to what the truth is. At the same time, you need mm-hmm. a compromise. Now, you are put in a bad light. Na mapagbibintang ka mm-hmm. na, alam mo na, constructive dismissal moves yan. Mm-hmm. That's not a good place mm-hmm. to be. Correct, correct, correct. <laughs> we'll like to read the questions from the audience. Sabi niya, can we consider immediate threat? on the company's property kung allegedly nagalaw ng employee ang cash collection which is unremitted. Puso ito ha, wala po siyang admission but the basic requirements na mag-present siya ng proof na na-deposit sa company is absent. At the same time, the customer confirmed that it was cor- collected already. What would be your hmm. advice? For me, uh, parang pasok na siya eh, uh, sa immediate threat to property. Kasi essentially, Essentially, there is already a breach of the protocols with the company. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of extrapolating lang from the question, uh, but Correct. it seems to me that the procedure is na collecta, remit the same day. And if it's mm. not remitted, there's a presumption that there was something going on there mm. na hindi dapat. Mm. So for me, pwede na to, na so prevent the situation. Here, hindi niya napakita yung, ano, yung uh, proof that na, na remit. Mm. So, yes. Case, parang kung if I send this person out again to collect more money, Baka maulit ito, oh, alam, oh. diba? So, uh, I, I agree with the attorney, Erwin. Uh, mukhang pwede na ito. It, it actually doesn't make sense from mm-hmm. a business perspective. Alam mo na nga hindi nakakapag-remit. Uh, Pupunta ka dun sa client number two. Uh, parang Baka, binahon mo pa sana, sana i-remit mo. Oh. <laughs> In my experience, I've never had a person who was responsible for loss of money allegedly because of their participation, na umamin at the first ask. Yung, kasi mm. di ba yung company, parang minsan ang unang tanong, dinakaw mo ba? 
wala pa talaga akong nakitang isang tao nagsabi, oo. Oh, oh. The first reaction is always to deny. So, mm. syempre, when you issue an NT, naiipit din si company, parang hindi naman umamin. Paano ko to sasabihan ng qualified theft? So, yes. what the attorney is saying is, you have to go back to the systems and protocols of the company. What is the SOP when it comes to cash handling? Yes. If magde-deposit yung cashier, dapat may deposit slip. If nag-deposit, dapat merong listahan. Pag hindi naglista, then that is the reason. Then you will make probable cause na bakit Siya, may, may kakulangan sa part ng employee na responsible siya sa kawalan ng pera, which is most likely qualified theft. Diba? Kasi kung na-deposit naman niya, there should be evidence there. And if the evidence is not present, then this person is responsible. Pwedeng tirahin doon sa action, the negligence. Kasi wala pa ako nakitang umamin. Maumamin ba? Yes, ninakaw ko. <laughs> Parang wala, even yeah. up until the end. Wala eh. But you can, I think, yeah. you can file for a qualified theft even if the person does not amin. Correct ba, attorneys? Yes, of course. Uh, Pwede that naman. Be, that would be silly na pwede ka lang mag-file ng qualified theft kung <laughs> umamin na. <laughs> you, you wouldn't need lawyers if that were the case. <laughs> so, <laughs> hindi, 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 hindi kailangan umamin. Tama po no, ba? No, no. no, no. Uh, doesn't have to be. Uh, Tina, may dadagdag ako. You said something very, very uh, interesting there, which is you have to have rules to be able to uh, uh, essentially parang gusto mo siyang gawing binary situation eh. Nag-comply ka ba sa, ano, sa procedures or hindi? Di ba? Mm. Isa lang yan, di ba? Parang uh, nag-comply ka ba o hindi? Kung hindi, mm. bakit? This is already uh, a ground for uh, investigation and possibly a mm. notice to explain. Now, here's yung gusto ko idagdag din na. Mm. If you actually put out rules or procedures for cash handling, it makes mm. it infinitely easier for the company. Yep. Mm. Why? Imagine ninyo, wala kayong, ano, ha, wala kayong procedure for cash handling. E kung sinabi ng empleyado, uh, I kept it po kasi medyo gabi na ako nakauwi, bukas ko na lang po i-deposit. Kung wala kang procedure... ako baka nakawan, kaya inuwi ko. Okay, eh, <laughs> oo. If wala kang procedures, there's no legal ground for you to say that was inappropriate. Mm. Why? Why? You give the employee the discretion of how to get the job done. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, parang, eh, ano ngayon kung binidhold ko until tomorrow? Eh, ikaw naman, kinakabahang ka na. If kinakabahang ka with those kinds of situations, my advice, put it down in writing. Ano ba yung komportable ka and what is allowed? If ever na kunwari i-withhold, it has to be documented, naka-picture, whatever. Do whatever steps make you comfortable and allow you to sleep at night. Which, but, which will mm, make it into those procedures. Yes. But at the end of the day, make it easy for the company to prove violating procedure, uh, vi- uh, violations on behalf of the employee by creating procedures that they have to follow. Again, ang ending na gusto natin, yes or no lang. Sumunod ka ba or hindi? If you don't have procedures, you won't be able to ask that question properly. There's a follow-up question which is related. From mm. Sagnaj Call Enough. If an immediate supervisor found out an anomalous transaction that involves company property, upon initial query, umamin, the employee admitted their anal- anomalous transaction right away. Can we put the employee on forced leave while scheduling for a conference meeting or due process to avoid further harm to the company? Or can we put the employee under preventive suspension right away? What is the ideal action to do the waiting period to complete the twin notice rule? Okay. Ah, comment yan. So, Very important yung tanong. You have to I, read I between to comment, the lines. I want to comment on the forced leave. Yes. I don't, I don't see it being a factor here. Kasi my Correct. problem with forced leave is there are some forced leaves na paid. Mm-hmm. Diba? O babayaran mm-hmm. mo pa. So nagpahe ka pa si empleyado. So, Parang sa ano ba yun? Advantageous pa ka employee. Yes. So, so my worry there is if you allow them to go on for, or if you force them to go on forced leave, it might send out the wrong message to the rest of yes. the team. Parang kapag may violation ka pa, uy, may libre vacation yan. So, <laughs> sino susunod? Sino susunod? It might send out the wrong message. So for me, I, I'm not seeing the value of uh, having forced leave. Ididiretso ko na ng preventive suspension yan. Because preventive suspension achieves the same purpose. Mm-hmm. Naka-isolate yung empleyado while you're investigating. 
but it's within the context of an investigation. Hindi siya free pass. Hindi siya libreng vacation. Mm. And then, preventive suspension, it's good for 30 days and it's extendable if you need it. But, and it's but good, I, right? Uh -uh. And 30 days, I think for most cases, it's more than enough time to be able to come to a conclusion kung ano ba talaga yung nangyari. Attorney, hmm. may question ako about preventive suspension. Let's say may maximize yung 30 days. Mm -hmm. And then, after 30 days, syempre unpaid siya. After 30 days, na real, uh, na uh, diskubrihan based on the evidence, na wala naman pala talagang kasalanan si employee. Hmm. Yung 30 days ba yun, na naka-preventive suspension siya, okay lang na talagang hindi siya bayad kahit walang kasalanan? Or hmm. is the company required na bayaran yun kasi wala naman pala siyang kasalanan? Hmm. Generally, I, I think different companies handle this uh, uh, in different ways. Tina, do you mind uh, uh, chiming in? Ano yung uh, usual? Na you have to pay eh, kasi if the person is innocent, you must pay. But a lot mm -hmm. of companies do not. Kasi, nagbabaka sakala na nang bakwating hindi ba But you actually must pay if the person was found to be innocent. I agree yeah. with that, Tina. And in fact, yung yeah. advice ko sa mga clients is it, it's essentially an acquittal. Eh. Mm. It's an Baka acquittal. Baka constructive eh. dismissal na talaga if you don't pay. Na oh, binawa oh, mong, oh, gumawa oh, ka ng issue, preventive oh, suspension mo in the hopes na mag-resign. Better to pay for that 30 days kaysa magkaroon ng second dollar letter. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah, that's, that's, that's actually yeah, another reason. Sorry, uh, Tina and Attorney, that's something that we have to highlight kasi I've come across a number of HR na akala nila na basta preventive suspension kay proven guilty or hindi, okay lang na hindi bayad. So we we might need to have to emphasize this kasi nga, yun nga, tulad nga na sabi ni Attorney, it's basically acquittal. So kumbaga parang napaka-disadvantageous naman dun kay employee. Siya na yung na-hassle. Wala naman pala siyang kasalanan. Tapos wala pa rin siyang sweldo. Diba? And, so, um, I do have, uh, go attorney. To my point earlier, that's another reason why I advise people not uh, sagarin yung 30 days. Mm -hmm. In case you're wrong, at least minimize yung exposure ng company. Sure. Konti lang, kung sakali. May dagdag lang ako kay Sag, Sag Nudge kanina. Kasi sabi niya umamin agad. And for me, that's not normal. If umamin agad, please put that person in preventive suspension pa rin. You know why? Kasi I'm sure... It's not the only issue that happened. There has been, most likely, there. this is not the first time na nangyari yun. So if you're going to terminate an employee, you better make sure you've investigated the history to ensure na if this is the first time and the last time, o di na huli. If this is the first time, pero meron pang, kasi I've had an issue where an employee used the car. Nag-car nap. So inuwi niya yung, yung kotse niya, for private use. So sa gabi, inuwi niya, kay girlfriend niya, tapos after this, kinabukasan, babalik niya. Nahuli po namin, caught on the act. Mamin. Then we looked at the records. 28 times na pala niya ginagawa. Yeah. Kaya pala umamin. Sabi niya, ma'am, first and last time ko to ginawa. Hindi ko na uulitin. Pero when we double check, aba, three months na pala niya ginagawa. <laughs> But syempre, mas madaling umamin ng maliit kaysa pag nag-investigate ka talaga, dun mo talaga makikita yung extent talaga ng kasalanan. So, yeah. tama sila at or please make sure you maximize then the opportunity to investigate because that might just be a tip of the iceberg and baka meron pa ibang tao sa company na involved. Oh, at or ano yung names ng book ninyo and how do they, how can they buy oh, your book? Okay. So the book is called Complete Discipline System, a uh, complete guide to keeping your employees in line without getting in trouble with Dole. It's available at info.legalguide.ph forward slash discipline. It's the red book. It's the red book. <laughs> yeah. mm, we have another one is, if, sabi po niya, ito, Dave Santos says, if may mangyayari na, says, says, na wala na employment from company A, ililipat sa company B, if di po ba pipirmahan yung acquisition contract, may pananagutan ba yung employee? Mag-isip pa yun. Okay, so magsasara yung kumpanya. Dave, I hope From you're company, listening. <laughs> okay, so, so lilipat ng company. So I have a few questions. What do you mean by lilipat? Is it separation, Were you, were you transferred? <laughs> were you transferred? Were you retrenched? And then 
i-hire ka sa kabila. Kasi that could dictate kung ano yung mga liabilities and obligations here. So mm-hmm. right now, ikaw tayo ni Ramon, parang kulang tayo sa data. Very cool tayo sa data. Oh, What does lilipat mean? Oh, like, oh. Nag-resign ba yan? Or, is, it, is it just an assignment? Yeah. Physically? Or ano? At to so, yung papano yung mara- kumwari, ano, um, empleyado siya ni Company A, okay. tapos sa dun okay. sa mga, let's say, owners ng Company A, gusto siyang ilipat dun sa isang business ng owner na yun. Oh. Pero yung mga businesses are not related. Okay. And na pinag-uusapan dito is liabilities ng employee. Separation pay? Separate, meron bang separation pay? And ano yung legal way to do that? Kasi technically, hindi naman related yung dalawang businesses eh. Pero mm-hmm. tin-transfer si employee. Okay. So, uh, depends on the situation. But let me share some of the things that we've tackled for other clients before. Ha? So, some of the things that we consider here is, is the transfer temporary or permanent? Kasi if it's a temporary assignment, baka pwedeng magmowa na lang muna yung dalawang companies. Mm-hmm. Basically, essentially, you're on assignment, trabaho ng company A yun, doing stuff for company B through the employee. That can be an option in certain circumstances. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying for every circumstance, ah, kailangan interviewin muna namin yun if it fits. Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, employer pa rin niya is company A. That has to be maintained. So there has to be safeguards for that. That's one option that can be uh, can be uh, considered. Another option is uh, resign ka sa company A, i-hire ka sa mm. company B. If ever na ganun yung mangyayari, possible kasi pumasok to under redundancy or retrenchment. Kasi hindi ka na actually essentially kailangan sa company A, in which mm. case, you would then be entitled to separation pay. And then pasok ka sa company B. Another mm. option na pwedeng i-consider is uh, uh, wala na lang separation pay, I'm giving you a full package. Ganito ang mangyayari. Voluntary resign here. And the number of years that you've served with company A, company B could recognize that as part of your tenure. With your... Mm. So that's also an option. Again, um, mm. these are some possibilities. But I think we need to talk to the person involved to be able to yes. which legal remedy would be most appro- appropriate. But ko ako tatanungin, pinaka-safest na kahit umangal yung employee, i-retrench mo na lang and you hire sa kabila. Kasi in which mm-hmm. case, bayad na siya for separation pay. Even if the employee goes to Dole, ang unang itatanong ng Dole dyan, was this, company, uh, was this person compensated for the authorized termination that happened? Eh, mm-hmm. Pag nakita na na bayad yung separation pay, I don't think it will be uh, uh, an issue moving forward. Mm-hmm. Sagnach has many questions kasi siguro mainit sa kanya. Mm-hmm. Uh, if the employee decided to resign while the employee is under preventive suspension, is it okay not to accept the resignation provided that he or she is under suspension? Mm-hmm. On another light, maraming beses if you put the person under preventive suspension, nagre-resign na. Ano pong pwedeng magawa ng company para maiwasan okay. ng problema? Okay. So, uh, med- guys, magka-crash course tayo ng konti sa resignation. Would that be okay? Tina, <laughs> yes, yes, go ahead, please. Okay. Important so, to. So, one big misconception with resignation is that it should be accepted or denied. Mm. Wrong. Resignation mm. is actually a right given to all employees. Mm. So, to both, uh, to which to employees? All, all employees. So, <laughs> lahat po ng empleyado may karapatan na mag-resign. Okay? Mm. Here's mm. the problem. Okay. Mm. So, pag nag-resign ka, yung ibang employer ang akala, hmm, ayoko kong umalis to. Magaling to eh. Hindi ko i-accept yan. <laughs> diba? So, hanggat hindi ko i-accept yan, hindi tumatakbo. Mm. Wrong. Okay. Mm. So, kasi what's actually happening is the employees are actually giving you notice. Mm-hmm. They are not asking for your permission. Okay? Walang pinagkaiba po yan. Kung kunwari, isa kang anak. At nagpapaalam mm. kang lumabas ng bahay. Mm. Nakatira ka sa bahay ng magulang mo, di ba? Mm-hmm. Kung ikaw, 12 years old or uh, bata, di ba? Kapag gusto mo lumabas, hihingi ka ng permission sa magulang. Ma, pa, pwede ba akong umalis? Mm-hmm. Correct? That is permission. Kung ikaw, 35 to 40 years old na, nakatira pa rin with your parents at lalabas ka, usually, ma, labas ako ha, that is notification. Mm-hmm. You have the right to go out. Matanda ka na eh. 
you don't actually have to ask for permission. You're just merely notifying. Same thing po with resignation. You don't actually have to ask for permission. The law sees you as an adult. Alam mo na yan. Alam mo naman what's best for you. But what you do have to give is notification sa employer mo. So, paalam versus paalam. Paalam. Oo. Oh, ang galing nun ah. Galing ah. Okay. Sino nagbigay na quote na yun, bro? Uh, si Attorney Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> so, paalam versus paalam. Yeah. Okay. So, so resignation, pinapaalam mo lang. Okay. So, does that change kapag may preventive suspension? Legally, it does not. You still have the right to resign even in the middle of preventive suspension. But here's the thing. Kapag nag-resign ka, hindi ibig sabihin, it gives you a free pass na, oh, Absolute wala na. na. Uh, wala na eh. There's no employment I'm to speak gone. of. Yes. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Last day, when you resign, as Tina mentioned earlier, there's an obligation that arises. Under the labor code, you are required to give 30 days as a turnover period. So for the next 30 days, whether you like it or not, empleyado ka pa rin na employer mo. And within the 30 days, kung matapos yung, preventive sus- ah, kung matapos yung investigation, mm-hmm. you are found guilty. Then you don't get to resign. You don't get to leave the company as a resigned employee. You get to leave as a terminated employee. Kasi matapos yung disciplinary process in the middle. Mm-hmm. Is this making sense? Tina, I hope, uh, and uh, Rona, I hope I'm making sense. Yes, yes. it's completely. Yes. Sobra. You can still terminate an employee who is resigning but is tendering his 30-day notice. Yes. Yeah. That's why in our workshops, we recommend within a week, tapos dapat yan. Hindi ka dapat mm. papatay-patay kasi there's always the risk na magre-resign yan. And once mm-hmm. nag-resign yan, there's already a race for the, for the clock. Once yan, yes. lumagpas ka 30 days, uh, hindi mo tinapos yung investigation. Kapag yan nag-clearance or, or nag-certificate of employment, no choice ka, lalabas sa records niyan, resign. Mm-hmm. Which Saka ka- iba po yung resign, di ba? Iba yung inak- tinanggap mo yung resignation, iba naman yung tinanggap mo na isushorten yung 30 days yes. notice. Yes. Kasi a lot of people, pag inabot tapos kinuha, akala nila, ay pumayag na si company na hindi oh, na ako pag-asok. <laughs> immediate resignation. Kasi nag sinulat ko sa letter, immediate resignation, tinanggap ni HR, immediate yung physical copy, that means pumayag na sila. Can you clarify on that? Kasi so many employees are parang questioning. At tinanggap naman yung letter ko. Tapos ngayon, bakit pinaparender ako ng 30 days? Ay, sa letter ko, nakasulat immediate. And okay. din nga, ano din ha, yung ibang employees, ina, sinasabi din niya, tulad nung nasabi na Tony kanina, dahil nga sabi natin na ang resignation is not subject for approval. Akala nila, Blanket hmm. statement yung subject, hindi subject for approval na pag nagbigay ako ng immediate resignation, hmm. wala kang choice. Kailangan mong tanggapin. So, attorney, hmm. ano po ang sasabi niyo tungkol dito? Okay. So, again, pinapaalam lang sa'yo na magre-resign na yung empleyado. Once you hmm. give that letter, it's not up to the employee to determine kung kailan yung turnover period. Kasi gaganti naman ngayon yung magulang. O sige, uwi ka by 11. Uh, may, ano, may, may rules din yan eh. In the same way, ito naman sa employers, the rule is, oh, sige, resign ka. Pero you have to give me 30 days in accordance with the labor code. Or it can be longer. Kung nasa kontrata ninyo that the turnover period is actually a longer period. But for purposes of discussion, let's assume na 30 days lang. Now, yung 30 days na yun, as Tina said earlier in the program, it's for the benefit of the employer. Bakit ginagamit ng employer yung 30 days na yun? Number one, para maghanap ng kapalit mo. Number two, para i-check kung may naiwang ka bang trabaho na dapat ma- ma-settle pa. Number three, ma-check kung may utang ka pa ba. Number four, ma-check kung may company assets na dapat ka pang ibalik. Mm-hmm. Diba? Right. So all of those are for the benefit of the employer. <laughs> now, yung a privilege na binibigay sa employer legally, sino yung tao na pwede magsabi, Kailangan ko ba to or hindi? Is it the employee or the employer? It's the employer. employer. Kasi it was a privilege given to him. So, it's the employer's discretion whether pwedeng payagan na, o oh, sige, cut short na natin itong 30 days. Or, hindi, sagarin natin yan. Wala ka pang kapalit. Hmm. Diba? Now, legally, how does it uh, affect things kapag sinulat ng employee, I hereby resign. Effective. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite namin yan. Ko. 
So whenever we see that, we have to balance that out because if you just say that in the letter without any accompanying context, that's that has no legal effect. It's ah. zero. You hmm. cannot dictate the parang uh, <laughs> kailan ko gusto umalis. You cannot. There are specific instances under the labor code wherein uh, the turnover period is not required. For instance, in cases of serious insult to the person of the employee, mm. and then uh, uh, if you resign then, the law allows you to leave immediately. The second one is inhumane treatment. Nilaka sa basement. Bawal ka mag-CR Bawal until, oh, until 5 o'clock. At pag nag-resign ka, the law, the law says inhumane treatment yan. Third is attempt uh, of a crime. Uh, no, no. Commission of a crime against the employee. So, so kung mapapansin ninyo, itong mga nandito, it's very, very dire. It's very, very serious. But for most resignations, it's what we call a vanilla resignation. Ibig sabihin ng vanilla resignation, yung pinaka-common na flavor. Ayoko na magtrabaho eh. If yung hmm. resignation mo, yun lang, and you're not able to cite any of the grounds for immediate resignation, wala, magto 30 days ka. Kung gusto mo ma-shorten, <laughs> ang diskarte po, makiusap ng maayos. Makiusap ng maayos sa employer na boss, baka naman pwedeng, ano, we can shorten it. And, and we actually teach a course for employees on how to negotiate a shorter uh, period with their employers in our resignation course. So so the key word here is kailangan mo makiusap kasi as it is if it's a vanilla resignation yung wala ka talagang immediate grounds 30 days yet unless you ask for it and get consent. Now I want to give a pro tip sa mga HR and business owners na pinagpasahan na resignation letter na nakasulat immediate. Here's the tip. Accept it but sulat niyo sa baba uh, uh, turnover, turnover period has to be complied with. Last day is on black. So, mm-hmm. in that case, essentially what you're saying to the employee is, I'm accepting your resignation, pero I reject the premise na immediate ka. Okay. So, that's a safe way of doing it. Now, kapag matigas yung ulo ng employer, hindi, mm-hmm. feeling ko talaga, immediate ito. Umalis. Well, that's when the AWOL protocols come into play. Kasi essentially for the next 30 days, empleyado pa rin ninyo to, di ba? And within, eh, anong gagawin mo sa empleyado kapag hindi pumasok? You apply AWOL procedures, di ba? In a return to work order mo yan, in a notice to explain mo. Walang pinagkaiba. It doesn't matter whether nagbigay siya ng resignation. Again, for the next 30 days, empleyado mo yan. So treat them accordingly. It doesn't mm-hmm. change the responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I hope that made sense. Yes, of course naman, attorney. Meron po tayong question sa, uh, coming from one of our um, mentors din po sa Philippines HR Group, si Sir June Mendoza. Sabi niya, Hi, attorney idols. Is there such a thing as time served in preventive suspension? For instance, an employee was preventively suspended for 30 days, but final decision was not termination. Instead, employee was suspended for 60 days. Can the actual suspension implemented be just 30 days? 60 days net of the 30 days preventive suspension. Nako, uh, ito naman sasagutin ko kasi actually idol ko rin to eh. Idol Sir Jun. Hello, kamusta po kayo? <laughs> so, so I, I like, like the question. question. I like this question because uh it allows us to go into the discretion eh, given to the employers. So, mm. what we have to understand is employee discipline is actually part of management prerogative. What that means is the law actually gave employers free reign over how they want to discipline their employees. So for questions like these, kung nari sa deliberation, oh, ilang araw na ba na, na suspend yan? 30. Hmm. Eh, tapos lumabas sa suspension, 60 days. Ang sagot ko dyan, depende po sa gising ng employer that morning. <laughs> Kasi kung maganda po yung gising ng employer, they may they might actually use their discretion to credit that time. Ah. So pwede ibawas based on their discretion. Essentially, what I'm saying is it's their choice. However, kung medyo masama yung gising, ah, and, yat, and then they're asked to decide. Ne, ituloy natin yan. They also have that discretion. Kasi under the law, 
uh, binigay sa iyo yung authority to decide what is an appropriate uh, level of uh, uh, penalty to be given. If you decide that 60 days, even nagpas pa yung preventive suspension, is the appropriate penalty, then the law gave you that authority to determine that. So yun po ang sagot ko. Depende po sa gising ng decision maker. <laughs> Sir Jun, thank you very much for that question. We have meron a question. Pa, meron, Go, Rona. Meron pong, uh, isa pa tayong question dito. So iskipan ko na yung maximum days for preventive suspension kasi nabanggit niyo naman kanina na 30 yes. days max yun. Mm -hmm. And we'll continue with the question from Sagnaj. Ang sabi niya, while waiting for the preventive suspension for earning employees, can we assign other tasks <laughs> for the employee? Pwede pa po bang utusan? <laughs> Wait, naka preventive suspension? Naka preventive suspension ako. Okay, okay. So so you, you, can't it, you can't have it both ways. Kapag pin preventive suspension mo, totoohanin natin 'yan. The uh, no sit this one out. As in wala ka talaga dapat. Kasi kung uutusan mo lang din, ibayaran mo na lang. And then and then pasukin mo na lang, 'di ba? Para it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. As far okay, as Baka maipit kayo later on pag nagreklamo sa Dole. Yes. Correct. Pin preventive suspension po ako pero pinagbuhat ako sa warehouse. <laughs> Parang ano, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Attorney, if the employee was given four memos already for tardiness and absences, the next one to give is suspension. Pwede mm -hmm. po ba na mag-proceed na to termination instead of suspension? Ay, maganda yung sagot ko dyan. Mm. So marinig yung sagot. Sige, okay. gusto ko marinig. I don't know. You know why? That would be dependent on your handbook and your company policies. There's a misconception kasi that uh, under the labor code, ako dapat isususpend mo muna yan, blah, 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 bago i-terminate. Here's some trivia for you guys. Suspension isn't even in the labor code. Would you believe? It's not. It's given under uh, the same powers as management prerogative. What the law said was, you're, you guys are free to determine ano yung levels of punishments that you want to give. So if you want to include suspension in the mix, then go ahead and include it. For the question here, attorney, nasuspend na ng four times, pwede na bang i-terminate? I don't know. Did you, did you create a system wherein kailangan na four times mo nang masuspend bago ma-terminate? If that's the case, then go ahead. That's the appropriate answer. For other companies, for suspensions, that may be too long, especially for BPOs, wherein physical presence is a prime uh, uh, determinant of whether an employee is doing a good job in in the work. So for other companies, siguro hindi ka uh, tardy ka and then masuspend ka once, possibly dun sa ladder nila, uh, after that suspension, termination na kagad. So uh, going back, pakisili po yung handbook. Or if, if sakaling wala pa kayong progression in your handbook and your procedures, it might be time to make one. Yes. Right. We have a question. In one act, employee committed several offenses. Can punitive suspensions be compounded and added up resulting from those several offenses? Pasaway okay. naman itong mga empleyada natin, no? Okay. So what I do for cases like this, uh, these, um, yung mga magkakaparehong kaso, Kunare, it's tardiness, maraming instances, I lump them all together. Uh, are there cases wherein hindi nakapag-remit? I lump them all together. Kasi dun papasok yung pinag-usapan natin kanina, which is totality of offenses. If there are uh, uh, offenses which actually fall under the same category or characterization, they can be lumped together into one super uh, legal ground for termination. Yeah. Oh, oh. Now, Ang susunod na tanong dyan, naturally, is after hindi magkakaiba eh. Magkakaiba ng, ng offenses. Then yes, one option would be to combine them. Pero ang gagawin ko dyan, one notice to explain lang. Parang uh, I would probably divide the notice to explain into separate sections. So offense number one, pack. Offense number two, pack. Offense number three, pack. Why? The logic there is assuming this turns into a labor case, mm -hmm. Right there and then, kitang kita ng labor arbiter na, oh, sandali, we're not dealing with an isolated case. Actually, ang dami na palang ginagawa ng empleyado. Agreed. And it furthers the the evidence that the termination may be ano, uh, rightful, considering mm -hmm. the number of uh, violations that the employee committed. So so going back, medyo makabaya. Yeah. 
Attorney, just to add lang, kasi one of the most favorite reasons for companies to terminate, lalong-lalo na if it's a manager, is yung loss of trust or loss of confidence. Yeah. Pero okay. more often than not, if loss of trust and confidence ang nilalabas, almost always yung manager na yun, dederecho sa dole yep. for illegal termination. Yep. What would be your advice for companies? Tam- kasi diba it's one of the grounds for just causes of termination. Yep. Pero and, mukhang hmm. it becomes, parang nag-blow back eh. What's the proper way of using I, that ground? I love this question. Thank you for asking it kasi it allows me to explore this topic. Hmm. So loss of trust and confidence, we don't really recommend it. In fact, among yeah. the different just causes for termination, we consider it to be one of the weakest. Hmm. Why? Hmm. Because it's very, very subjective. Mm-hmm. So what may be a grievous error to one person may be something light or trivial to another. Mm-hmm. So what mm-hmm. do we advise? Kapag loss of trust and confidence, do not let it go alone. Pa partner up mm-hmm. namin with another ground. So dun sa mm-hmm. ginawa ng manager, is there a ground for serious, uh, uh, serious misconduct? Meron bang ground mm-hmm. natin for neglect? So we try to leverage our chances of winning the case by pairing up loss of trust and confidence with another thing. Kumbaga, don't treat it as the main uh, entree. Ah. Appetizer lang yan. Kasama lang yan. Side uh, dish. Side dish. <laughs> <laughs> so so try, to, try to serve it with something more substantial. Ang name of the game is objectivity. You have to have a legal ground, which kahit sino yung tumingin, it's readily obvious and uh, objectively verifiable na hindi talagang may ginawa na mali. Hindi yung subjective like, I just woke up and I don't feel uh, that he's trustworthy. Parang, <laughs> parang hindi ko na siya feel. Diba? Parang, how, how would you honestly argue that in an right. arbitrary proceeding, di ba? Parang mm-hmm. naalala ko tuloy yung ano, isang narinig ko during a hearing. So tinatanong ng judge yung isang witness. Ano po masasabi nyo? Ah, feeling ko judge kasi ganito. Diyos ko, pinalabas yung witness. Wala pong lugar ang feelings ninyo rito. Ano po ba talaga mm-hmm. natin pa rin nyo? In the same way here for labor proceedings, you can't rely on feelings. That's not verifiable. So pair it up with something that can be validated easily. True. Mm-hmm. What are the... Legal recourse that the company will have. Kasi sometimes, di ba, minsan nagtatampuhan sa loob ng company. Tapos <laughs> oh. yung tao, parang nag-walk out. Okay. Pero, sila na nga may mali, pinapareport mo balik sa trabaho, pero dederecho sa dole, terminated okay. daw. Or constructive okay. termination. Okay. What would be a proper defense for companies with staff that they, nev- they did not really terminate Pero dumerecho lang sa dole slash tulfo kasi they feel they're angry. They, they are so angry. They just want revenge. They're, that's actually very easy. Um, mm. Kapag mga staff na ganyan, usually mm. pinapadala ko sa kliente ko, payroll. Mm. Kung na-terminate yan, bakit ka naka-receive ng last payroll? Ano mo? <laughs> mm. Payroll mm. salary. That's one. Number two, mm. um, return to work. Usually I treat it as if nag-AWOL yun. And kapag mm. nag under our procedures, return to work order kagad yung ipapadala ko. Mm. So, so at least may pwede ako ipakita sa dole. Parang, sir, paano pong terminated yan? Actually, hinihintay na po namin yan tatlong araw na. Mm. Pala na dito, pumitila. So, sir, baka naman pwede tulungan ko kami napaliwanagan yan kasi hinahanap na siya sa trabaho. So mm. that's uh, two things. Payroll, ipakita lang ninyo that kasama pa rin siya dun sa payroll as an employee. Number two, return to work orders. And then number three, possibly, kung sakaling may notice to explain na na issue that would be good evidence. Mm. And if na, kunwari, nag-walk out, hindi ko gagamitin na loss of trust and confidence doon. That's pretty weak. What mm. I would uh, 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 allege there is insubordination. Yeah. Mm. Which is, uh, which is uh, willful disobedience under our just mm. causes for termination. Mas malakas po yun. Correct. So try to look at... Na- I think attorney ang kano kasi nila pag ano eh, pag akala kasi nila pag loss of trust and confidence. Akala nila mas mabilis gamitin yun, mas madaling way para i-alisin yung employee. Hindi nila alam na mas mahirap i-prove yung loss of trust and confidence. Kasi marami standards pang sinusunod dyan bago ka makapag-declare na loss of trust and confidence. Yes. Was the employee holding a position of trust and confidence in the first place, di ba? 
eh baka naman eh just ko masyadong mababa yung position. Ano pinagsasabi mong loss of trust and, trust and confidence, di ba? Hindi mo lang siya feel. Oo. Oh, <laughs> janitor pala yung kaaway mo, di ba? Tapos ginamit mong ground, loss of trust and confidence. Mal- malabo yata tayo ma- ano siya, manalo sa, sa kaso niyo. So try Sir, to June at- and I have a uh, go. Try. So try to look at the same situation or violation using the lens of another uh, ground for just uh, just causes. Huwag lang yung loss of trust and confidence. Again, tama yung sinabi ni Attorney Ramon, side dish. Ang, tra- ang trato namin dapat doon. It can't be the primary dish. Sir June and I have talked about it before that there are parang what you call syndicates to say there are some employees who come in, work for maybe three to five months. Pero the intent talaga is um, mag-file ng labor case, maghanap lang ng dahilan. So sometimes even though no ground for a labor case, because of some issue, they would magpupunta sila sa dole, tapos may sulsol. And ang intention talaga is not to settle. Wala talagang total grievance, pero they just want to be paid out. Usually, yes. an amount of 20,000 to 100,000 just because for them, just to drop the labor case. And labor natin is very pro-employee. Even if allegation might not be true, Dole will still take the complaint seriously. And if the employee does not want to drop the case or settle, then the empl- it will become a form labor case. What would be your advice to companies to experience this? They follow due process. Wala naman talagang even with the employee per se. Pinabalik naman. Pero the intention talaga of the employee is really to get the maximum payout. Oh, okay. So, um, it's actually human nature to push for a position which is advantageous to you. So, parang ako tinatanggap ko na yan. If it's an employee na nag-complain, of course, human nature would dictate na I would try to jockey for the position which benefits me. Mm-hmm. Di ba? Mm-hmm. So, tanggap na lahat yun yun. Uh, huwag na sumama yung loob ninyo. Kasi the more na sumama yung loob ninyo sa empleyado, the harder it is to think of things objectively. Get that out. Get emotions out. Look at it objectively. Ang sagot ko for companies who are encountering this is actually advice number three kay Chris kanina. So advice number three, if you guys can remember, is rely on systems. Kasi for employees like these, ang, ang recommendation namin, ayaw makipag-ayos, itutuloy ko yan all the way to uh, arbitration. Ilaban na lang natin. And if you have strong systems, you have nothing to worry about. Kasi you would be able to show that there was a notice to explain, there was an admin hearing, uh, there was coaching counseling involved, there was a notice of termination. If you have all of those completed, even if umabot tayo sa arbitration, then uh, it shouldn't be something to be too worried about. Of course, I'm say, uh, I, I'm not saying nakapagkompleto ka ng papeles, you present it in the right way. It's a guarantee that you would win the case. True. However, the odds of you winning go up exponentially if you would have the right systems in place. Now, Something to think about. That's for the case itself. I want you to think about the team, the bigger team in particular. You want to avoid sending the wrong message to the rest of your team. The worst message to send out is, ay, pag kinasuhan natin yung management, maglalabas yan. Oh. So for any minor uh, violation, what ends up happening is, if you establish that as part of your culture, na malambot yung management, they can't stand up for themselves, Usually, yung mga pasaway na empleyado, magkakaso na lang yan yep. for an easy cash out. So, how do you remedy that in the long term? The way to remedy that mm-hmm. is to make a stand. Tuluyan ninyo. Mm-hmm. Kasi, <laughs> by, kasi by, by standing up for what's right in terms of what the management is uh, uh, going through, you're sending the message to the rest of the team that accountability is valued in your company. That if you do something wrong, we tackle it, we deal with the consequences, and then we move on if possible. We do not reward uh, uh, yung mga galaw na, na you take advantage of the company and just because kinasuhan, uh, bibitaw ka, mm. we don't tolerate that. And in fact, here's a warning. If you do it once, please expect na may mga susunod pa yan. Kasi you, you effectively taught your your workforce, that it's the right thing to do. You're rewarding them for doing that. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the behaviors that you reward, expect to get a lot more of them. Mm-hmm. Ayan, that may question. Okay. 
Go, Rana. May question pa po tayo dito. Is it okay to extend probate period for another three months? Okay. Um, in certain situations, yes. Um, we wrote an article on this at legalguide.ph and um, we, uh, the title is One More Chance. So let me give a, a summary of what happened there. Okay. If you do this the wrong way, actually, it will come back and bite you. Kapag nag-extend ka ng probi period doing it the wrong way, I can assure you, gagamitin laban sa'yo yan ang abusadong empleyado. Kasi under the law, it's just supposed to be six months, correct? Mm -hmm. If you want to extend, ito yung allowable sa akin ng circumstance. Nakikita mo may potential yung empleyado. Na konting training na lang, makakalusot ito eh. Konting tulak na lang and konting coaching. So what you do is you talk with your employee. Parang... Kuya, kaya pa ba? If kaya pa ba, are you willing to extend the probationary period? Kasi if I evaluate you now, actually babagsak ka. But I'm seeing mm. potential. Are you willing to extend it? If yes, and I would have the employee sign a contract along with all of the results na tipong yung performance review niya, mababa, na kung sakaling ngayon siya evaluate hindi siya papasa. But management and the employee are agreeing to extend the probationary period just to give the employee another chance. In that case, that's okay with me. Why? Because it's in favor of labor. And that's mm. what the labor wants. Now, what are some other circumstances na nangyayari to na hindi ako agree? Ito yung pinaka-notorious. One, two, three, four, five, and then patapos na yung fifth month. Ay, may probationary employee nga pala tayo. Wala pa tayo. <laughs> Uh, na performance eval mo na ba yan? Wala pa. Wala pa. Eh, kailangan may performance eval yan para umano. Ano gagawin natin? Extend natin. Extend na lang. Yeah, natin. yan po yung ayaw natin. Why? Because that uh, extension was as a result of negligence on the part of the employer. You had all of that time to evaluate and train. You did not make use of it. So for me, delikado yun. Now, in that case, kung sakaling gusto mo talaga empleyado, ituloy mo na lang, patuloyin mo na lang na regular. Kasi being regular does not mean na immune na sila. It's not like, oh, regular na ako, may immunity bracelet ako. <laughs> Hindi na ako pwede fire. <laughs> oh, it's not the case. Kasi even regular employees are actually subject to performance evaluations. So kahit na regular employee yan, pwede pa rin sumabit yan kung sakaling hindi siya mag-comply. I have to admit, it's a little bit harder kapag regular employee na. Not as easy as uh, failing a probationary employee. But there are still ways. And that's the safest way to go in that situation. Kung gusto mong i-retain yung empleyado. Related to that is the question from Stella Marie Bangkayo. Pwede mm -hmm. pa ba mag-end yung year contract ng isang employee kapag bumagsak siya sa quarterly evaluation? Or in other words, mm -hmm. how would you terminate an employee properly in, in terms of performance? Is it one evaluation? Is it two evaluation? Oh. Because... Okay, so for us, sa legal, uh, we would feel safer kung conservative yung position ng company. So what does conservative mean? We have to establish a pattern of incompetence. Mm. Parang dinodocument mo yung incompetence ng tao. Why? Kasi when you establish multiple evaluation periods wherein it's showing na nag -fail, you're actually documenting evidence to bolster your claim na pwede siyang i-terminate for gross and habitual neglect down the line. Yeah. If it's just one performance review evaluation, I doubt mm. it that that would be enough to say na, ay hindi, pabaya itong empleyadong to. Out na to. It would have been safer kung at least may tatlo, uh, tatlong buwan na, uh, you know, mo, it's just one quarter, if ever. Mm. We have to go back to what attorney said before, which is what is your system of evaluation? And mm. you have to make it automatic. Mm. Kunyari, kasi if it's if you're just evaluating after a quarterly evaluation, that gives you parang three eva quarterly evaluations is almost nine months, which is a long period of time. You can actually shorten the evaluation if you see mm. somebody committing an offense. Late ng three times, bigyan mo na ng letter. Late pa ng three times, bigyan mo na ng letter. Mag-collect na kayo ng letter. Hanggang marami na kayong letter. I mean, set a milestone wherein HR will have to 
provide a for a, a, an automated letter to the employee so that the offenses are documented systematically so attorneys will not have a problem when you terminate them eventually ang problema kasi minsan ah hindi kumabot ng kota pero baka na last month lang so hindi ko bibigyan ng letter tapos next month hindi na naman umabot pero kasi baka you know, because there's other reasons, walang tao sa mall, and then you skip the letter, make sure if there are, up, if hindi talaga na ahabot yung stone, give the person a letter. Malapit na tayo mag-time. I know you are on vacation or on company <laughs> activity. So I will end with a last question from Edgardo Bugayong. Mapagpalang hapon, a wall notification. Can you please remind everyone again on how to properly terminate an employee na nag-awal or nag-issue ng immediate resignation or nagbigay ng resignation tapos the next day hindi na pumasok. Okay. Sige. Uh, let's try to compress our uh, one and a half day workshop into... <laughs> Do you, oh, ulit, kaya, promote kaya. the one and a half day workshop ulit. <laughs> diba? Because I know last year you had a workshop. Eh. Could you yes. tell us also about this workshop? I, I, I will, pero sagutin ko muna siya kasi I can answer that in uh, a couple of uh, minutes. So the most important thing kapag AWOL is you put the ball in the hands, kumbaga sa basketball eh, put the ball in their court, let them ano, let them deal with it. How? Uh, ganito yan. You have to put uh, a paper trail na talagang may intention to abandon. So how do I do that? How do you abandon a state of mind, attorney? Diba? Na parang, ayoko na talagang pumasok eh. So I do that by giving him orders. What do these orders uh, look like? It's return to work orders. So I order the employee, balik ka dito, balik ka dito, balik ka dito. Usually, ang return to work order namin, it's a series of letters. Uh, the more, the merrier. The manier. The, the more, the manier. <laughs> kasi it gives you ample evidence na talagang you gave multiple chances for the employee to come back. Now, return to work order, hindi talaga sinasagot, uh, hindi talaga sinusunod. Afterwards, we then send out a notice to explain for AWOL and abandonment. So kung mapapansin nyo, magkaiba po yun. For some people kasi akala nila, pinadala ko ng return to work order, should be done. No, it's not. Return to work order, for us, that just sets up the stage as evidence para pwede kang mag-notice to explain, which is the thing that is required under the labor code. So ang required po, hindi dapat mawawala, notice to explain, Ito parang wala, walang hearing kasi wala namang tao eh. Pero, ayaw umaten nga. Ayaw nga umaten. But for me, lalagyan ko pa rin yan. Sige, eh, malay mo biglang mag-attend, di ba? Mabuti na kasi yung sobra sa kulang. And then, finally, a notice of termination after a, a certain number of days after the notice to explain. So, so in summary, uh, notice to explain, ako dinadamihan ko yan. Uh, siguro two or three. Then notice to explain. So return to work order. Return to work order. Uh-huh. Notice to explain. And then finally, notice of termination. In short, that's how it is. But uh, when we do our workshops, actually there are a lot of steps in between. It. There are phone calls to be made. There are emails to be sent. Just to generate more evidence that ayaw talaga pumasok ng employee. I hope that last, serves last, as a better. Last, yeah. last, last question because it's quite important and it happens then. A lot, some people who go a wall, di ba? So, syempre, nag wall, hindi na pumasok. So, syempre, their payroll is withheld. And mm-hmm. obviously, the staff wants to get paid for the time mm-hmm. that they have served, but they do not want to follow clearance procedures or even return back to work because nakahanap na ng panibagong trabaho. Okay. So, the next step of the employee is to go directly to Dole to file for money claims. Mm-hmm. Di ba? When that happens, how would you advise the the company to provide? Given that the a wall procedure is already being followed, okay. pero the direct was si employee sa dole, so nakuha mo yung level that yung sabi na ni dole bago ka magbigay ng notice of decision. Mm-hmm. Meaning to say, employed pa si employee. Kasi sometimes companies find it difficult to send the second letter after they received the dole letter already. Mm-hmm. Kasi it would seem as if it is a reaction to the Dele letter, not you following proper procedure. Although you have already sent the return to work order and the notice to explain and the invitation to adding. Yun lang kasi, it takes time. It I, takes agree. Time. I agree. So, 
what would you advise when this happens? Kasi minsan nakukulangan ng oras. At masyadong mabalis si employee. Gets ko yun. Nakakatakot eh, di ba? Na parang, hala, ito terminate ko pa ba ito? Eh, andito na, may kaso na, di ba? So, here's may complaint the thing. na. Oo. Here's the thing. Kapag nailabas na yung mga return to work order, notice to explain, and and a lot of chances have been given the employee. In this case, I would recommend na ituloy yung notice to uh, notice of termination. Why? Mm. Even if nandun na tayo sa Dolly, I can always show, even before the Dolly case came to light, actually the procedure was already being followed. It would have been different kung yung employer naging negligent. Hindi pumasok. Kaya mo, ayaw niya sa atin. Ayaw din natin ayaw sa kanya. Sa kanya. <laughs> Hinayaan mo lang, di ba? And then a doon is pina comes up. Kung dun ka palang return to work order, medyo may problema tayo dun. Kasi hmm. it would fall into the narrative that it's a reaction to the Dolly case. Hmm. That's why we recommend kapag nawala yan, always have a ready AWOL procedure in place. Kick it in na kagad. Return to work order. Para kahit mag-Dolly, we can always show the mediator. Ito po actually, we're at the tail end of a, of a procedure. In fact, hmm. for dramatic effect, Minsan, ipaparecommend ko pa sa client ko. Doon natin iserve sa, sa hearing yung ano, notice of termination. If sure na sure ako that everything was followed, I would ano, I would even serve it there in certain circumstances. Mm. Kasi uh, kampante ako that we did the right thing. Now, kapag sakaling wala pa, di ba? Nandun yung mediator, tatanungin, oh, nasa na raw yung last day nito. I would then politely explain that they are undergoing a procedure, matagal na pong wala yan. And in fact, parating na po yung decision. And if they want their last pay, we would advise them to go back to HR to complete their clearance process. Mm. How can you compute the last pay if hindi siya dumaan ng clearance? Clearance pre- uh, uh, presupposes that O oh, sige, kakalculate na natin and then ibabawas na natin lahat ng mga liabilities and kung ano man yung mga dapat ibalik, di ba? To get to the final pay. Kasi final pay is whatever they, they earn uh, and whatever mm-hmm. to them minus whatever liabilities. We cannot determine the liabilities until bumalik. So mm-hmm. in which case, during the hearing, yeah, advice namin, please go back. We're happy to process your, your clearance. That way, mailabas yung last pay. And then actually, hihingi ako ng tulong dun sa mediator. Sir, could you please, ano, uh, sir or ma'am, could you please help me encourage the employee kung sakali to process the clearance. In fact, we can set another hearing po. Assuming na i-process na yung clearance, I can always come up uh, on this date. Baka dito pa tayo magbigayan. Assuming po na mm-hmm. ayos think. So that's mm-hmm. another... Pero walang clearance, pwedeng i-hold ng company yung final pay. Kasi... Diba? Well, Most yeah. people, hindi nasisipot tapos diretso sa dole para humingi ng final pay. Pero to, to be fair, ha, kapag pinaliwanag mm. sa dole mediator, they usually put things into order naman. Eh, na parang, eh, madam, kailangan mo mag-clearance dito to be able to get the final pay. In fact, may, may computation kami na pwedeng ipakita. Diba? You just mm. have to go through the clearance. Mm. Usually, they're Hold helpful in explaining things. Mm-hmm. But, well, but ikaw rin uh, on your side, you have to be able to explain things uh, uh, as they appear to you. Now, you're going through a process. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, very positive notes. We'll just read so that, ano, you know, sabi ni Sir June Mendoza, salamat, attorney. Zaga, mas sama lagi ang gising ko. Tama, <laughs> tama lahat ang ginawa ng HR ilalaban dapat sa NLRC. Don't settle. Ang problema lang naman e eh, pag mali or illegal ang ginawa ng employer. Tapos sinabi ng ano, uh, thank you HR Cafe and the guest attorneys for the very informative topic. Any last words and please, please promote your activities over the next couple of weeks. Then after it's me, then Rona to end the show. Yes. So guys, we understand employee discipline can be a mysterious thing. Kapag hindi mo naiintindihan, parang, paano ba yan? Pinasok mo A, B, and then yung result random eh. Mm-hmm. It's not always that way. You can actually increase the chances that you win yep. using the right information. And we're here providing you guys with the opportunity to learn about things so that you, you can learn it in a day. Yeah. Uh, what, what took us years and years to find out trial and error, at least may bigay namin sa inyo best practices. So the latest one will be on Feb 2 mm-hmm. at UP Diliman. We'll be conducting an employee discipline workshop. It's going to be from 9 to 5. The link is here. It's discipline.offer.legalguide.ph. If you go there, 
there's a sign up link and instructions will be there i hope we get to see you guys uh soon and we get to tackle your questions and we get to give you some clarity during that workshop for me i'm a very big fan of the two attorneys above uh, league they have a site called legalaccess.ph if you haven't met the attorneys if, if this is the first time you've met the attorneys in the webinar i'm sure you have seen their easy to read and understand articles everywhere around the web legalaccess.ph because they make employee relations very relatable and understandable to both employees and employers and as you can see i hope that you guys also see how they conduct themselves a lot of people see labor relations as a battle we're in general against general and you have to be super duper tough but i strongly believe that more experienced veterans handle labor relations the same way as author the attorneys above me does magaling sila Marunong sila, very prepared sila, and actually they're very tough when it comes to the battle. But they sound so nice, so considerate, so compassionate, and so fair for both sides. Diba? And I think that's very important because sometimes a lot of problems, labor issues can be prevented if companies and employees don't see each other as enemies. Nung pumasok yan, magkaibigan kayo. Nung sinasahuran mo yan, itinuutusan mo yan, magkaibigan kayo. Tapos sa bandang huli, nag-away na kayo. Nakalimutan na ninyo lahat ng good times. Puro bad times, gera na ang katapat. We need to look at it as, if there is any problems with labor relations, it's something we must manage on a human level. Not just a technical level. Kasi, for one, we are most companies are kulang sa technicals. Many times the HRs are negligent when it comes to documentation, either tinamad, hindi ginawa or walang oras lang. So it's some but it's companies talaga, it's easy for uh, companies to lose labor cases kasi talagang may pagkukulang din ang company. Which makes it really hard kasi pupunta ka kay ala attorney. Tapos sabihin mo, I don't care. I just don't want to pay the person. Pero kayo na ba mag-solve ng problem ko? But when they open the case, kulang kayo ng systems, kulang kayo ng documentation, kahit gaano kagaling si na attorney, mahirap pa rin manalo sa dollar labor case kasi talagang illegal yung ginawa ng company na yun. When that happens, I hope companies are humble enough to admit and to settle na lang from the very beginning instead of dragging the case out na sigurado naman ng lahat talo. Okay? I mean, there are cases talaga na 50-50 or baka may chance ka pang manalo but there are also cases talaga na parindig mo palang alam mo, talo talaga eh. <laughs> Kahit na i-court of appeals mo or Supreme Court, talo pa rin kasi talagang may mali talaga sa ginawa ng company. Always remember that employees will come and go but companies are there to stay. Meaning to say na sometimes it's better just to settle the labor complaint now than to have it drag on for many years and drag the whole company with it. Because a labor case is a very stressful experience for all, win or lose. So in short, for, for me lang, as what attorneys have said, read the labor code. Two, if you don't understand the labor code, please contact either attorneys either sa legalguide.ph because they do have a facebook page and a website or you can pm them at attorney erwin zaka and attorney ramon ramirez but at least kahit pa paano, they will be able to guide you correctly they're very nice people and i strongly encourage that you actually meet them live in person on february 2 2023 kasi sa totoo lang Actually, now you've seen them on a webinar, that's great. But seeing them live is, a, is an entirely new experience and is a good investment. I hope everyone would sign up. Kasi if at least, kung hindi nyo get sa seminar, or sa workshop, pwede na ninyong tawagan si attorney pagkatapos ng workshop. Parang consultancy na lang. So strongly, so thank you so much for your time, attorneys. Always a pleasure to have you at the show. And then, uh, Rona, to end the show. 
Yes. Um, attorneys, maraming maraming salamat po for gracing our show today. I learned a lot from our session. Um, kahit na dalawang oras lamang yun. And I know yung mga viewers natin ay marami rin na pick up from the session that we have today. Um, ini-encourage po namin yung mga viewers today to sign up. So go to discipline.offer.legalguide.ph para makapag-reserve na po kayo ng inyong slot. Anytime that we have opportunities like this to learn from people who are actually doing it and are considered as one of the best, um, dun sa, lalo na sa Philippines HR Group, um, itake dapat natin, i-grab natin yung opportunity hmm. na yan. Para alam natin kung paano natin iha-handle at hindi tayo palaging kinakabahan at natatakot pag tayo ay nakaka-receive ng summons para sa conciliation mediation. Ayan. So yung sabi nga ni attorney Erwin kanina at ni um, uh, yung, yung nanginginig-nginig pang gano'n yung papel. So para maiwasan natin yan, let's make sure that yung mga ganitong opportunities, we attend it, we go there para alam natin kung ano yung gagawin natin. Again, go to discipline .offer.legalguide.ph or you can also visit yung kanilang website. Um, there are a lot of free resources there na po pwede nyo rin gamitin at maraming mga nakapost doon ng mga blogs and blogs that can help you in your work as an HR. At yan na po, narating na po natin ang end ng ating session for today. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat for staying with us. We hope that you learned a lot. Pwede nyo po, yung para po doon sa mga hindi nakaabot, pwede po kayong sumama sa ating team replay. Makikita nyo po ang ating um, video for today sa YouTube and it's also going to be um, posted doon po sa Philippines HR Group and of course sa Facebook page ng HR Cafe Usapang Trabaho po at iba pa. Hanggang sa susunod na linggo po, next week we all we have another very very exciting guest. So magkita-kita po ulit tayo 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. next Sunday dito po sa HR Cafe Usapang Trabaho buhay at iba pa. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Sunday dahil Monday na naman po buhas. Bye everyone and thank you for spending your day with us. Bye-bye po!